welcome to the 2024 Australian Age Swimming Championships, live from the magnificent Gold Coast, where it's time again for the largest and most anticipated meet on the swimming calendar. There will be triumphs and there will be records broken. It's finals time and you have the best seat in the house, right here, live and exclusive on Nine Now. A welcome in to the beautiful Gold Coast, one of the most stunning coastlines in all of Australia and the drop-dead gorgeous location for our 2024 Swimming Australia Age Championships. It is night seven of the 2024 Age Championships. The sun is setting and a beautiful sunset. Uh, the curtain is just about to rise, though, on the seventh night of finals. Tonight, we have a roll call of stars diving in. Names like Barclay, Alberton, Conias, Tui, Pope. Many of them very exciting junior dolphins. But here in commentary, we're lucky enough to have the expertise of senior dolphins taking us through the events. My name is Kate Orman, and I'm joined by two-time Olympian silver medalist and former world champion Matt Welsh. We've also got two-time Paralympic swimmer Braden Jason. And welcome back to Alex Graham, a two-time bronze Olympic medalist. Alex, thanks so much for coming back for a second night of finals. I know you have a bit to do with the junior dolphins. You're a senior dolphin yourself, and you're a training partner of Carl Albert who is going to be in the pool tonight. What kind of future do you see him having? Yeah, absolutely. It's great to be back. And, you know, where else would you rather be? The sunset's looking absolutely stunning. And, yeah, as you mentioned, um, Carl Alberton in the 200 metres butterfly won the 200 metres IM earlier in the week. So I'm really excited to see where he's got in and, store. And, Brayden, you're looking forward to a couple. Who are the stars you are pointing out for us? Paul, well, we're starting off with a strong minute watch here for the 100 Butterfly, but Jacqueline Barclay, one of our World Championship swimmers, should be vying for gold in the 100 backstroke, but also be finishing off with some relays tonight, and I've heard a few rumours that Conias will be back, so record watch for the first 50 for his club of Somerville. Could we see him go 0.03 faster and get that Australian record? We certainly hope so. We're about to dive in. It is all coming up right here on the Gold Coast live on Nine Now. I'm going to hand over to Matt Welsh, Braden, and Alex for the first event. The crowd's starting to fill up here. The Gold Coast Aquatic Centre. We love to sit in its beautiful temperature. It's a little bit cooler than it was during the middle of the day. So a couple of jumpers out. I was a little bit chilly. Or maybe it's the ice bath I was doing to recover from a massive heat session. We had so many phenomenal swims. And I tell you what, I don't know how these guys aren't worn out. Worn out. They've been doing some phenomenal swimming. As we look into the marshalling room, a good, good insight here, seeing about these athletes, how they stay warm. Matt Welsh, how do you like to sit in the marshalling room? What was your processes? I tried to keep things um, pretty chilled. We were talking about this last night, Alex. I like to keep things pretty chilled. I just have a chat with the guys and, uh, and keep it pretty low-key. I didn't want to be too focused and too sort of internal, but I also didn't want to sort of forget about what I was doing. So, uh, yeah, interesting to see that circle, though. Uh, I always think that dynamic just staring down the opposition right opposite. Um, and I really feel it almost looks like they're in, having a game of cards or something in the middle there. But uh, we are getting in to the action. It's going to be a big night. For those who didn't see the heats this morning, we had some really big swims, some really tight tussles, but in the 50s and the 400s, in twos and ones, in everything, all over the place. It was quite remarkable this morning. I'm really looking forward to tonight's finals. We're starting off with the girls, 15 years, 100 metres butterfly. You can see them being presented to the crowd as we speak. Fastest qualifier there, Lily McPherson, 101.50 this morning. She looked pretty good. She was a clear favourite, about a second and a half in front of the rest of the field. How do you think this one's going to shape up, Brent? Braden? Well, she had plenty in the back end. She was well and truly in front of that 50-meter mark and just held. So I'd love to see her press into that second 50 seat. If she can crack that minute mark, that would be a phenomenal swim for a 15-year-old girl. But, hey, it's age championships, night seven. Let's make it happen. Yeah, the 100 Butterfly is a great event. It's mostly about the second 50. The girls will go out... I want to say comfortably, but when you watch it, it's going to look fast, but they're going to make sure that they've got enough stamina for that second 50. Mm -hmm. 
We are underway. The first event of the night, the girls' 15 years, 100 butterfly. Great swim this morning from Lily McPherson in lane four from Manly. But Rhiannon Shen from DVE Aquatic out to a blistering start. Got almost a body length lead at the start. We say in the 100 butterfly, it's about the back end. But in this case, it's about the front end. Uh, sorry, it is a little, little person out in front. Got my lanes mixed. And uh, she does touch first. This is a dynamic swim. 27.95 out. Two seconds faster than anyone else in the field. Can she bring it home? The record, Australian record, is 58.47. Yolan Kukla. That's going to be tight. She's got to come back in a 30 point to get that swim. But at this pace, I think it's going to be close. It's going to be very close. It wasn't the best turn for her, but she's looking very strong. Late, oh, it's going to be a battle for Silver here, but it will be Lily McPherson. Does she have it? Oh, just over the minute, but a great time. 100.54, a full second faster than a heat this morning. This morning. And that was really done in, the, in that first 50. Alex, that was a dynamic first 50. I was a bit blown away, I have to say. I didn't know what to uh, what to expect, but not that. Yeah, McPherson really nailed the start there. And you could see before the race, behind the block, she was laser-focused. So she knew what she had to do, get out fast, and that's exactly what she did. And she brought it home like a champion. Well, in her mind, there was no one else that was going to win that race but her. She went out after it, and she predicted it correctly, almost two seconds ahead of the field had the same sort of gap at the 50. So they all came home roughly the same pace, but Lily McPherson out very, very fast. Second through, Rhiannon Chen and Chebecca Liu in for third, but all eyes were on that middle lane. We have the B final now, the top 10 into the A final, 11 to 12 in the B. The B final underway, and what a blistering first 50 we saw from Lily McPherson in the A. Who in this race is going to take the reins and go for it? Looks like a, a little bit of a lead there from lane eight, Luciano Tabarelli from Phoenix, maybe slightly out from the field, but now the middle lane's just coming through. Lane four, Ava Candy, the fastest through from Ballarat from this morning. It is Ava. A little bit of a long glide onto the wall, though. And actually, Greenhall from Rackley looked like she uh, got onto the wall better because she didn't have to glide onto a full stroke. We'll see how that turn affects them on the way back. Really starting to move through now. Ruby Anderson in lane five. It's a tight battle between three, four, five. In fact, even two. Keely Smith, Sophia Ianello, Ava Candy. It's across the pool. I think it's going to be lane two to the wall, is it? No, oh, it's a tie. That's how tight it was. So lane two does get it, but so does lane four. 103.98. We saw them both throw their arms at the wall at the same time. And our first tie for a win, I believe. We've had a few ties for seconds, for thirds, and definitely in the mix. But a tie for first in our B final, 103.98. Great to see the girls improving on their morning swims as well. If they had it done that in this morning swim, they definitely would have qualified well and truly for the final. So really good opportunity in these B finals to test yourself at night and maybe learn some lessons and try and execute the race plan that was meant for the morning. We've got the boys up now in the 1600 butterfly. I always felt that the, the day I learned to really back end it and, and flow it in the first part and bring it home, did it? Um, I'm assuming you've raced a few hundred flies. How, what was your best method? Yeah, for me, um, I'm a bit more of a muscly swimmer, so just trying to take it out nice and comfortable, but really working that turn and I've got really strong underwaters as well so the skills are key in a hundred butterfly whether that's off the start or off the turn really work into that 15 meter mark as we see all the top level guys do. I don't know if you remember uh, they changed the rule obviously to that 15 meter mark before that uh, Dennis Pankratov from Russia really made a name for himself world record Olympic gold medalist by swimming 40 meters underwater not much of a spectacle for the audience, but incredible to see. Um, and uh, it really does show the strength of those uh, underwater butterflies. So you only got 15, you've got to make the most of it, don't you? Yes, exactly right. Um, and that's key, get off the start, get underwater and get moving. So often that dolphin kick is a lot faster 
under the water than it is on top of the water because you've got the stroke to contend with too. Yeah, definitely. And 30% um, of the swim can be done underwater. 15 at this end, 15 at the other. Short course racing, over half of the racing can be done underwater in the butterfly backstroke events, and it is quicker. So uh, we'll have a see how they go. The Australian record holder in this, Jaden Hadler, he had fantastic underwater skills, 52.91. Fastest qualifier here, Cash Milner, with a 55-3-1 this morning. So a few seconds off that blistering time from Jaden. Well, long hold on the blocks, but they are off for the boys. 16 years, 100 metres, butterfly. Pretty even start across the field, but uh, Alex, take us uh, through the race as they're going, please. Yeah, it looks to be Cash Milner making an early move out in the center of the pool. Next to him, Ethan Slatter. So we'll see how the boys are going through. Looking really strong though is Cash Milner in the center. Lane five and lane three, strong turn. Let's see how these underwaters are going. It looks like Charlie Lutton. With a really strong underwater, the boys actually turned first there, so we'll see who has the energy on the back end of the race. Looks to be lane four, Cash Milner moving through now, but next to him in lane three, Ethan Slatter now making a move. You can really throw a blanket over this field, it's going to be a very, very tight finish. Who is going to nail their finish on a full stroke? And it is Jake Tyso coming from the back storming home to take the win in 55.32. It just shows the importance of a fantastic finish. And Tyso, oh, take your bow, mate. What a swim. Perfect technique, perfect finish, and it's a goal for you. What a swim. Absolutely amazing. I actually, uh, in the middle of that, Alex, I put four, number four up in front because I was making a call with 25 to go that I really felt that, uh, that Cash Milner was going to do that. Uh, but you could see just before the wall, he was well off and he had to take another full stroke. And as he was bringing his arms around, the others were already on the wall. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so, yeah, just bad timing there. It's those skills that we were talking about, the underwaters, but also the finishes on the wall. Yeah, so great swim there from Jake Tyso. Really did, I want to say, come from nowhere because he was there. He definitely was there, but so was everyone else. So the B final now and the boys 16 years, 100 metres butterfly. We've been uh, treated already to some great swims. We've got so many tonight. 400 IMs to come, 100 breaststrokes, but one more 100 butterfly. And the boys are in the water now. Very strong underwaters from the middle of the pool and they're out to a rocketing start. Looks like it's going to be Carlos Moisa in the middle of the pool and Liam Vogel leading them out. Trying to settle into a nice rhythm now. The boys are pushing the pace. Alexander Stilto. We'll see how they can nail this turn on a full stroke. And they do. Carlos Moisa and Stilto in lane three. Strong underwaters from the boys. It looks like Oliver Jacobs now moving through the field. Very strong turn. But it is the race in the middle of the pool. We've got Malak Eamon out in lane zero now making a move. But it is Moisa moving through now. But lane zero, the outside smoker, is he going to get on? Very close. Oh, he's done it. Malak Eamon out in lane zero. We love an outside smoker. Fantastic swim there. Hey, if you have a lane, you have a chance, and you're taking out our belief final here from lane zero. Again, it came down to the finish. And that, a significant improvement on the time from this morning. That, that was, a, that a was amazing. Drop. Did you, if you didn't see the times come up, who was the winner for you? I, I was watching uh, Moisa in the middle there. I, so. I watched both. I really thought that Carlos got to the wall first there. So that must have been an incredible finish from, uh, from our swimmer in lane zero, from uh, Malik Amin from Blacktown. Uh, yeah, that was incredible. Absolutely incredible. We saw him out there, but I, I didn't think he'd be able to get over the top. But this is what we love about the sport. You just don't know what's going to happen. And this is what we love about the 400 IM as we see the girls being presented. We saw so many back and forths in the heat this morning. We had 
about five heats of the 400 IM and every single one of them threw a curveball. And we saw some really fast times, fastest through for the uh, for the heats from this morning was Piper Asquith with a time of 4.55.16. So a couple of the girls getting underneath the five minute mark. But so many curveballs, people really taking down the butterfly, others waiting for the breaststroke, um, others coming over the top in the freestyle. So this is going to be a really tight battle. Well, as we see Piper Ask with our fastest qualifier in lane four, we know Remington, she's got a phenomenal breaststroke, already has won gold in breaststroke events throughout the championship, so I think we're going to watch out for her in that third 100. I think that's where she's going to make a move. Yeah, the different strengths of each of the swimmers, some are strong in the fly, some in the breaststroke, some in the back, the free all over the place. I, I think... If you're going to pick one, I'd want to be strong in the breaststroke. The difference between a good breaststroker and a great breaststroker can be a big difference, whereas the difference between a good and a great freestyle or a backstroke or a butterfly is usually a little bit less. So third leg, the breaststroke, butterfly to backstroke, breaststroke to free. A quick start in the girls, 16 years, 400 metres, individual medley. This is a big race. It's a gruelling race. It's a tough race. And it's about pacing. It's about being strong and tough. But already we can see Piper Asquith really grabbing this race by the scruff of the neck and taking it out hard in the butterfly. She did this this morning in the heats. She really went out after in the heats. It made it seem all the more so because she didn't quite have this many people close to her in the, in the heat. She had a bit more space around her. So will she drag a few others with her? Julia Remington right next to her and Alice Monaghan in lane six. So very early days in the 400 IM, but you can see how quick they're coming down at this back end of the fly. Getting ready to come into backstroke. Yes, coming into the backstroke now to round it out, Butterfly. Asquith, with the, she, not as big as the lead as she had in the morning because Monaghan is right there. I think it will be Monaghan to the wall. Oh, not much in it there. Asquith would have preferred a bit of a bigger lead like she had this morning, but Monaghan not letting her have it. No, she really came into that wall hard. Um, about 10 metres to go, they were fairly even and then just pushed away. Whether Asquith just backed off knowing that she didn't want to hurt herself too much, but uh, Monaghan really making the most of it. Making the most of it now, though, is Julia Remington in the backstroke. She's just swam straight through the middle of Asquith and Monaghan and just said, excuse me, this is my leg. I'm taking this out. That big arm, she seems to have really nice long arms as she rotates over for that backstroke turn under the water, five, six, seven, eight metres underwater, much further than anyone else has managed to do. Long underwaters from a few of the outside lanes, but Julia Remington really schooling the girls on this backstroke leg. And watching her legs too, she's still got quite the high kick rate, but I think that's just to keep her hips up. I don't know how much she's really using her legs to propel her forward. Definitely looking like she's favouring her arms, but great rotation there in the backstroke is in the mat, and that's how you create efficiency. Yeah, we saw this morning, because it was just so sunny, a lot of the girls with their heads slightly up out of the water. They're a little bit blinded by that, uh, that bright sunshine outside, that Gold Coast sun. Tonight, though, it's a nice and dark night, so they don't have that issue. All the heads a little bit further back, and a really efficient backstroke leading into a strong breaststroke. You don't often get that link, do you, Alex, between uh, the backstroke and breaststroke. I don't know many people that are great at both, but Julia Remington might be one. Yeah, she's doing extremely well at the moment. And as you said, yeah, the link between the back and the breast, not often seen, but it looks like Remington is a master of all four strokes, which is, you know, you don't often see it. It's handy for a 400 AM, you've got to say. Yeah, absolutely. And she's doing a really, really good job of this breaststroke leg now. She's opened up quite a gap to the rest of the field. Let's see that they can catch her. Now, we've talked about the difference in speed throughout these championships, difference in speed, but that breaststroke to the freestyle. If Julia Remington can hold this lead, this lead that's roughly 10 to 15 metres, that's going to extend to 20 metres when she's going faster in the freestyle. And she's got a fair amount of freestyle that she'll be doing before the others touch the wall. I think Julia Remington 
basically could grab a kickboard at this stage and finish the race off for freestyle. She's so far ahead. This is absolutely incredible. We keep saying that uh, these races throw some curveballs. I did not expect this much of a lead. I really thought this was going to be a tight race, but she's already 15 metres ahead of the fastest qualifier from this morning, Piper Asquith, who really went after it this morning. Absolutely incredible to see. Yeah, we knew we were in Remington Watch in that third 100, but we thought she'd be coming through the field just to overtake the lead. But she hasn't just overtaken the lead, she has taken the lead, thrown it in her pocket and said, catch me if you can, girls, because when we come down to this 350 mark, I'm almost going to say it's going to take five grand pianos to fall on her to get her to lose this one. Now, I'm trying to do my math. She's turned in a 414. If she comes back in a 30, 32, something along those lines, uh, we'll see how that goes. But... Uh, yeah, it's going to be a very fast time. You can see how much the first 300 hurt her. And I think Asquith is starting to catch up. Uh, it's not going to be enough, though. I, I think even Thorpey would struggle to, to catch up that lead with that uh, the big kick in the last 100. But it will be Julia Remington bringing it home in a very fast 4.48. A very quick time. 4.48.77. Piper Asquith, 4.55.11. A little bit faster than this morning. Monaghan, the early leader, 5.01, and Larkin, 5.03, as the rest of the field comes in. So a great swim there from Remington, and a uh, bit of a reversal from last year, Alex. Yeah, it looks that way, as uh, Piper Asquith won last year, and Remington was the runner-up. So good to see the girls spending a year away and having these battles. When you're in the age group championships and you're moving through, you are often racing the same people. So it's really good to see them both continuing to race and having a battle. As we see, the results are now official. Julia Remington with a 448, a sub 450 swim. It's very impressive, very handy time. Asquith coming in second and her training partner, Monaghan, coming in third. Now, we're, we're looking at the heat swim times this morning and sort of that's a lot faster. Obviously, she went uh, 4.55 this morning. In fact, both girls went 4.55 this morning. So going 4.48, you think that's, uh, that's a big improvement, uh, seven seconds. We don't know what her personal best is, um, and I don't have the information on, but you've got to think that's got to be one of the, her best swims ever. That You couldn't improve much on that. Well, to be that far ahead of such incredible athletes like Asquith, obviously she's gold medals from last year. So to have 15 metres on last year's winner who just got silver, I think if that's not a PB, I would be scared for next year or whenever she races next. Yeah, it's quite an improvement for sure. It's the boys' turn now in the 400 individual medley. What a race that was for the girls. Can the boys put on an equal show? The fastest qualifier this morning, Samuel Higgs. And we're a big fan of Samuel Higgs for a number of reasons. The main one being Warringah, the Warringah pink. And we can see the pink cap there. We're very lucky to get a couple of pink hats from Warringah this morning. Thank you very much to the team for your generosity. You have made lifetime supporters of us. And Oscar Kreitzberger did a great job this morning as well. But we've got Kreitzberger, Higgs, Woodford, Feynman had a great swim this morning. Haylett, Metcalf. We've even got the big name in Thorpe, Samuel Thorpe, from St. Peter's Western. So we've got some big names here, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. And the boys look like they're relatively close. Higgs really out in front this morning with a 4.31. And the rest of the field, only really about five seconds separates them all. So Higgs will look to take this out, but we'll see which of the boys can go with him. Yeah, on paper it looks that way, but, you know, we saw the last race. It just went absolutely out. So anything's possible. Off and racing in the boys' 17 years, 400 individual medley. What a cracking race it was in the girls. The boys turn now, and we see the familiar pink cap. We love the pink cap from Warringah in the middle from Samuel Higgs. He took it out really well this morning and had a very mature pace to swim. You can see him now just linking that stroke out. Butterfly is not an easy stroke. It's not as technical as breaststroke, but... It's not as efficient as everything else, and he makes that butterfly look easy. 
Looking good so far. What do you think, Alex? Yeah, he is looking very strong at the moment. The rest of the field seems to be going with him so far, so we'll see if they can hold on. But as we know, in a 400 IM, everyone has their different strengths. We may see a little bit of a lead change in the backstroke and potentially onto the breaststroke leg. It looks like Warren Haylett out in lane two, swimming out of Griffith University, swimming with Tommy Fraser Holmes, a former 400 meter IM Australian record holder. So let's see if Tommy's imparted some wisdom onto him. Out underneath the minute mark for Samuel Higgs. Pretty close between the rest of the field, though. A really tight race for second so far in this backstroke leg. Breaststroke coming up next, so important just to keep this pattern going, keep this rhythm going. Samuel Hicks still in front, but Kreutzberger, Haylett and Woodford. Uh, Lina Stern in second. Back a little bit is Menzies in lane one and looking over at lane six and lane seven, Feynman and Metcalf. But it is still Samuel Higgs out in this backstroke. How's his breaststroke from this morning based on the heats there, Braden? Well, we know Samuel Higgs has quite the breaststroke engine behind him. He was in the final four, that 200 breaststroke. So we know he's got a strong breaststroke leg. I was just watching the underwater work there, and that's what separated Kreutzberger from Higgs. Higgs really worked his underwater work because Kreutzberger was catching up with the highest stroke rate. But as we see, that underwork has not just exceeded him, he's put three body lengths on the rest of the field. Yeah, that was a nice backstroke. His skills are fantastic. Into the split stroke for the breaststroke, and he's gone 10 metres off the wall. Most of the others coming up around that sort of seven or eight, so he's managed to get uh, a good distance off that. And he's, as you say, a great 200 breaststroker, and he really is driving forward. If you're a strong 200 breaststroker, 400 IM might be an extra race for you on your schedule because Samuel Higgs is really showing how to do it. Yeah, as we can see, the breaststroke leg seems to be the key in these IMs. And quite often, these IM boys will be able to do a pretty tidy 100 or 200 metre breaststroke. As you see, Higgs going out to that 10 metre mark again. So really showing his class above with these skills. Yeah, we love to see the pink cap in the middle of the pool. He's had such a good program this week. He was well ahead of the field this morning, but not this far. This is a big swim from Samuel Higgs tonight. Were you expecting this, Braden? I was expecting something, but maybe not this. Yeah, look, this is one of the great 400 IMs. I thought Remington's breaststroke lead there was one of the great ones of the night. But to be this far ahead of an incredible field from Kreuzberger, in our swimmer in lane number five as well. It's, it's incredible. And we know he's got a great freestyle. His brother's the gold medalist in the four, the 15. So, and they're both surf life-saving athletes. So we've seen the Kreuzberger brothers. They've, they've got a big crew, but the Higgs brothers are just head and shoulders ahead of the pack. Luke Higgs said, I've got gold, bro. You want one? And he goes, yep, sir, 400 AM. Tick that box, it's mine. I think it's gonna be very hard for him to lose this one. Now, the title holder last year won this event, Carl Alberton, in a 4.24.03. Higgs there turning 3.53. So if he can come home in roughly that sort of 29.30, he's going to go a bit faster than that. It does show that record, 4.16 by Mitch Larkin, that uh, how fast that is, that 4.16 already passed. He is coming down to the wall, and it's going to be a 4.23.18. That is a... Brilliant time, and Samuel Higgs really gave it all there as he removes the pink cap just to try to cool down a little bit. You can see how much that hurt. Second through Kritzberger, 429.22, Woodford, 432. Fourth home, Metcalf, 437.34, and Feynman getting into that 438. But Samuel Higgs, 423. He's taken his hat off. I take my hat off to him as well. That was a blistering start. He just went out after it and didn't give up. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic swim there from Higgs. He looked a bit gassed at the end there, and I'm sure he was. The 400 IM is no joke. So really good job from the boys. Again, fantastic improvements from their times from this morning, which we really love to see. The skill, as you get a little bit older, as you start moving through the ranks in the senior swimmers, the key is to swim fast in the morning and faster at night. So as long as I can get, keep practicing that at these meets, it should hold them in good stead for the future.
Yeah, it's just brilliant to watch these uh, breakout swims. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I love it when someone just goes out after it and holds on. He didn't just hold on, though. He absolutely nailed it. Uh, you can see him. He's at the side of the pool. I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure if you can see on the screen, but he's on just at the side of the pool. He can't quite walk getting out. He very gingerly got up from the ladder at the side of the pool, and now he's just slowly walking across with a couple of his mates, just uh, keeping, making sure that he stays upright. Uh, but he gave all, and that's what you want. Uh, yeah, brilliant swim, amazing swim there from Samuel Higgs. We go into the girls' 100 backstroke. The girls, 17 years, 100 backstroke. Should be a very, very tidy swim in this 100 backstroke. As we see Jacqueline Barclay on the screen there, making her Australian senior Dolphins debut at the World Championships in Doha. She'll be really looking to make a statement here and see if she can crack that one-minute barrier. Yeah, she was out after it this morning. She went one double O, didn't she, Sivon? She went double O seven this morning. She went double O three eight in the relay last night, and her PB is a fifty nine four seven off memory. So no, you're very interested in this because you're potentially racing uh, against this, and uh, yeah. Of course, I'm interested, mate. Well, no, I've, I've got to watch every single back, part I mean. of this race and write down what do I need to do better. <laughs> Brilliant work. Well, this will be a show from Jacqueline Barclay. She really showed it this morning. What more has she got in store for tonight's swim? As they jump in, we've got that block cam footage in lane four as they get ready on those backstroke wedges. I must say the suit and the goggles match. I like that. Off and racing, the girls 17 years, 100 metres backstroke. MC Bomb, very impressed with the colour coordination, but I'm impressed with that 15 metre breakout from Jacqueline Barclay. The St. Peter's swimmer went very fast this morning, 100.77, and has moved over a little bit. It's on the left hand side, her right hand side of the lane as she's going down. Mackenzie Burns right next to her, keeping her company, but she does turn first. 29.21, Burns through just over 30. Uh, Miller through second, just under 30. So, bit of a, a swim outside in that lane seven. Can Miller hold on for second? I think Jacqueline's got first all wrapped up at this stage. She's, if anything, increasing the speed. MC Bond, bring him down to the line. She has such great skills against everyone else in this field. Obviously, it's a bit tough out there tonight. The flags are moving at the other end, but she's done an absolutely great job to just go that double O, one nine. So faster than that relay swim, faster than this morning, not her PB, but also she'll be racing opens coming up after this event. So yeah, she's probably trying to save herself a little bit too. It's a big ask for some of these younger top end swimmers with age straight into open and then there's trials late. There's a lot of really big events this year. Yeah, when we were speaking with Gary, Gary Barclay last night, he was talking about the teams being selected. They have to do the times here at the age championships to be considered for those junior teams. So she's also obviously aiming for Paris, but if that doesn't happen, then she will want to make those junior teams. So that time will be considered. So that's kind of why she had to throw out the time at this age championships. Yeah, fair enough too. And... Uh yeah, cracking backstroke, one double O, not quite under that minute, but, um, you know, taking nothing away from it. It's a boy's turn now in the 100 backstroke. This is my turn to be super interested. Uh, it's one of my old events, and, um, yeah, brilliant time there from Isaac Cooper. 54.02 for 18 years, 54.02. That is quite an Australian record, I do have to say. The boys uh, getting presented to the crowd as they get ready for the race. They would have seen Jacqueline Barclay one double o it and really take it out so they know taking it out works kai lillenthal fastest qualifier from this morning yeah really looks really tight from the boys you know a 56 high to a 58 o so we should be in for a pretty good race here well uh swimmers in lane four and five at the exact same time this morning that 56 9 3 and then the third was only 0 0.01 off. So that's going to be super tight tonight. Obviously, there's McKittrick in lane five, and Prouton in lane three that you've got to keep your eyes on as well as that lane number four. Yeah, it should be a really intriguing race coming out of the middle of the pool here. 
Not sure who to put my money on in this one, especially when it's been so tight from the heats. Matt Welsh, what do you think? Well, I'm really interest, interested to see the underwaters. Um, you know, these boys, they're 18 years. They're really strong. They've got that strong core. They're, they've built enough, enough muscle to really work the underwaters. I know Isaac Cooper is incredible at the underwaters, hence the 54-02. If they can really work that 30 metres in this race, 15 off each wall, um, and transfer that speed into the actual swim, then um, it could be anyone's swim. But Kyle Lenthal and uh, Blair McKittrick, same time this morning. But uh, I think there's going to be a bit of pride on the line for n not tying for the final tonight. And they're off and racing. A little bit of a delay on the pull-up, and we've spoken about that a little bit, MC Bomb, and they came up. But it is Kai in lane four, Lilenthal, who had really worked that underwater work, also looking good in lane six, Joshua Kerr. Lilenthal just moving over that lane rope a little bit on the right-hand side. Also lane two, Alexander Foreman is strong. In fact, it is Joshua Kerr leading them through. Gone through in a 27-1, so quick out. But Lilenthal really working that underwater. In fact, Joshua Kerr pushing the underwater maybe even further. Lilenthal really pushing the rating now coming in. Josh Kerr, fantastic IM swimmer. We also saw him take out the 50 metres freestyle last night. But he looks to be moving over to the lane rope a little bit, so he's battling with that. He's still moving through, but the race is now coming in the middle of the pool. Is Kerr going to get his hand on? He does. And it is Kerr from Lilenthal. Pretty swift time, 56.31. Yeah, I thought he was sort of hitting that lane rope and sort yes. of stopping himself. Mm. He didn't really have that momentum to carry him through to the flags, but he got it in the end, and I, I think it was just on the touch because that lane rope really slowed him down. I agree. Both you and I am jumped in our seats. We're like, get off the lane rope. Uh, and, yeah, that you could, he probably brushed his arm on it, um, but it didn't seem to slow him down, thankfully. Uh, but what a what a swim out from lane seven. We were talking about the middles tying for the start. We knew it was going to be tight. Looking at the times this morning, there was only 0.1, 0.2 here or there. Uh, but he really went out after it and uh, made the most of the opportunity. Brilliant swim. It's just great to see these smoker. Or, oh, it's not really a smoker in that outside bit. To these people that you just don't expect. It's a real surprise. It's um, you know I, I love lane four, but you got to love a win from six, seven, eight, one, two, three, anything like that. Yeah, definitely. I love even the lane zeros, lane ones, but, um, you know, it'd be hard. I mean, if you know your competitors and you know you've been racing them for a long time, you can probably get a good gauge of how hard you need to go in these heats. So Josh Kerr there may be saving something a little extra from the heats this morning and obviously coming away with the win. It was good to see five of the boys go that 56 mark as well. So you can see the depth in that event. As we head now into the girls, a 13-year-old, 200 meter freestyle, another great race shaping up here with Jeff in lane five, Barry in four, Jones in three. But you can't take your eyes off anyone in this field. Yeah, absolutely. A few 210s in the field from this morning, a couple of 211s. So I'm really excited to see how the girls are going to attack this one. You know, the different strategy, strategies are going to come out. But in the 200 now, it's almost considered to be a bit more of a longer sprint race. So it could be foot down from the start and see who can hold on. Yeah, Kira Jeffs, such a big program, such a classy swimmer, did so well in the state championships in Victoria. They're off. We saw a bit of a delayed start there from lane six, Molly Borden. And, uh, but fr very clean off the line for everyone else. Kira Jeffs in lane five, Caitlin Barry in lane four. Some great racing this morning in the heats. And now they're all in the same fishbowl together. Bit of a smoker outside, Megan Shear. And she'll be taking them down at the 50 metre mark. The pacing is so important in these 200s, isn't it, Alex? Uh, you want to go out smooth, but you've got to set yourself up for this 
last bit, this sort of middle section and last bit of the race, don't you? Yeah, that's exactly right. And you don't want to get caught kind of watching what everyone else is doing. You've really got to swim your own race. As they move through this 75-metre mark, wow, it is very tight out there. I could not tell you who is in front. It looks like Mackenzie Wyleth out in lane eight. As we said before, we like an outside smoker. So here we go as she hits the 100-metre wall. And they are around in a 102.53. But again, the field is extremely close. Yeah, not a lot between the field. Out in a 102.5. Uh, but half a second behind her was the fifth place turn at that 100. So half a second separating five of them. And you can see across the line, one, two, three, four, five. As they're going through lane three, really starting to make a move now. Maya Jones. Caitlin Barry going right with her, the fastest qualifier for this morning. I think it will be Caitlin who will touch the wall and turn first at the 150. She does, 136.10. Now it's a matter of who can get to the wall. It's a sprint from there. This is a fantastic race from the girls. The middle of the pool all moving through now. It looks like Caitlin Barry starting to make her move and push away from the rest of the field. She's been waiting for this moment, waiting for a time to strike and she looks to be moving through and getting in front now. That was a big turn that we saw from Caitlin Barry. It was even at the turn, it's not even at the finish. 207-10. Kira Jeff second through to 867. Maya Jones to 923. They're our medal winners. But what a well-paced and mature swim from Caitlin Barry. She was always in the hunt, always with the group. She didn't overreact she didn't do anything other than as you say alex that uh, her race plan she stuck to it and she got the result she wanted 207.10 for the win yeah it was a fantastically paced swim and sometimes when you have got those other competitors around you you really need to keep your cool so she, you know she's showing wisdom beyond her years here in this 200 meter freestyle the other girl is doing a very good job to get under the 210 mark for the first time crowd looks to be warming up now as well. I feel like with that race, Barry really timed when she was going to strike at the right time. She didn't go too early where she was going to burn out at the end. She seemed like she had a lot left at the end and she didn't seem overly puffed at the end. It, she didn't look exhausted to me. It's it's sometimes the way in those races, isn't it? When you really nail it, the uh, it doesn't hurt as much. You, you just flow it. It just works. It just uh, You've hit that sweet spot. And, uh, and I think that's what we just saw there in that race. We saw a few people sort of, uh, I don't want to say backing off, but just in comparison to Barry. Yeah, that was uh, a very nice swim. Very, very indeed. The boys up in the 200 free now. We often get this in the program. We see the boys and the girls mixed in together with the same event. So we get a bit of a double helping. 14-year-old boys in the 200 metres freestyle. Lincoln Wearing is our fastest qualifier there on camera. Had a good battle this morning. Luke Lee, Riley Mears. We just saw Harrison May our fastest four from this morning. Yeah, it'll be good to see how the boys pace this one out with a few interesting arm moves being thrown around there at the start of the race. It's good to see the boys enjoying themselves. Did you ever do the uh, the arm slap, the, the biceps on the lats? You know, the thing, I, well, that was such yep. a standard move. It was. And some, some of the boys obviously had massive lats as well, so they really got that pop out of that one. <laughs> well, there's got to be a pop in this swim, I think. There's a lot of tension after a blistering heat session this morning. boys off and racing now in this boys 14 years 200 meter freestyle out very strongly Lincoln Catchpole out in lane 8 trying to take charge of this race the field looking pretty comfortable in the early stages I always like to look at the how the boys are kicking we got a big strong kick from Riley Mears in lane 5 but as we approach that first turn it is going to be Catchpole out in lane 8 it's interesting to see lane number five, Mears, there. He doesn't really do much underwater. He didn't do much off the start. He was the first one to come up. And on that turn, he did about one kick and came up at the flag. So, obviously, underwater isn't his strong suit. He likes the swim. Maybe he's more of a puller than a kicker. 
Um, yeah, so that was quite interesting because we don't see that in lot. We see the young boys and girls really use their skills. But watch him as he comes off this turn. He turns here in a 56 eight five and he's up right at those flags yeah you're right it comes up uh, comes up early but it also means that he can get that breath quicker and uh, not get into that oxygen debt later in the race uh, a few others similar sort of timing so you're you're dead on and um, with that uh that vision of him coming up early but we can see lincoln wearing starting to come through luke lee really coming through in this third 50 we talk about the premiership quarter and it's exactly what luke lee has done in that third 50 he turns Pretty much almost equal first, two one hundredths in it, Lincoln and Luke. And in fact, Le Lincoln Wearing starting to really push this last 50. The kick has come on song for Wearing in lane four. He's pushing ahead. He's going to be pushed all the way by Luke Lee, but I think he's going to have the legs. And he really is showing it. He's pushing it out to almost a body length from the finish. F finish uh, fast finish from Daniel Van Lewick as well. But it will be Wearing in one, Lee second, and Van Lewick in third. 159.43 for the win. 156.07, my apologies. 156.07, 157.45, and 158.02, our top three times. So 156.0, that is a very quick time as we see confirmation of the results. Yeah, fantastic swim there from Lincoln Wearing, and gee, he absolutely turned on the Jets in that last 50. Just like we saw with the previous race, the last 50 proves to be the tactical decision, really nailing that last turn, and that six-beat kick, his feet were almost coming out of the water, he was kicking so hard. Yeah, it seemed like they, again, timed that to perfection, but they sort of started in that third, the end of that third yeah. 50. They started moving. They came off that wall. And it, it, was it like, looked like the last 50, but it sort of just it was shown in the last 50. It started in that third, didn't it, it as did. they, they came over of, the top? Yeah, they built into that last 50. That mm. was very quite impressive. Another impressive race ahead of us with the girls, 14 years, 100-meter freestyle. This is certainly going to be a race to watch. We have so many great swimmers in this. We have Sheridan, we have Lawson, we have McClellan. We've seen her a lot. We've seen Sheridan a lot. We've got Plummer, Zunkin, Schneiders, Gibson. I mean, anyone could take this one out. It's going to be super tight. Yeah, based on the entry times from this morning, which are really only a guide, uh, you, you really don't know. Some people can take it easy. Some people, that could have been the max. We don't know, but... Uh, Alyssa Lawson from St Andrews program, 57 to about 0.9, almost a second ahead of the rest of the field. But we've seen that doesn't mean a lot in these finals when uh, we've got people swimming in the outside lanes just deciding to absolutely grab it by the scruff of the neck and take hold of the race. And that's what you can do in this 100 free, can't you, Alex? You can go out after it and uh, if you can hold on, it can be yours. Yeah, absolutely. It is a bit of a splash and dash. Um, so the girls will look to get a really good start and really make their mark early. We'll be looking at the turn as well because quite often, you got to, as you approach the wall, you really want to nail that turn. It sets you up for your back end 50. We don't want them to spin their wheels at the start, so it will look strong but uh, controlled in this first 50. In the water and away in the girls' 14 years, 100 metres freestyle. Fastest qualifier, Alyssa Lawson, in the middle of the pool. But for my money, Macy Sheridan had the best start. She's got a slight lead on the rest of the field, but only slight at this stage. There's still nothing in it. Alyssa Lawson really starting to come back in at this second 25. As the wind blows here at the Gold Coast Aquatic Centre, Lawson is on the wall first. 27-3-6. Sheridan right next to her second, half a second exactly behind her. So Lawson now in the box seat, coming down with 25 metres to go. Who's going to get there? It looks like the field's starting to move up now. Macy Sheridan really making a move. She's right on the shoulder there of Lawson. Lawson holding on, but Macy with the big, long freestyle stroke on the wall. And Alyssa Lawson holds on for the win, 56.79. Macy Sheridan in there, making a, a final dash in the last 25 metres with a 57.01. And Sienna Gibson coming in with the bronze medal, 57.71.
Lawson just too good there. But Sheridan's long arms, I thought they were going to just reach out and touch the wall before Lawson there. And she looked like she turned, as Lawson finished, she turned her head so quick to see what the result was going to be. And the swimmer there with the a silver medal from Darwin. A fantastic race from yeah. the swimmer. And, you know, the Darwinians have just been on it this week. Macy Sheridan has just been in virtually every race, it feels. Yeah, well, last year she won five gold out of the five events she was in. This year she hasn't been as strong as she was last year, but she's still doing so well from yeah, a country but, swimmer. And it's all based on the competition. She's potentially got a lot more competition now as the people go through. And uh, Alyssa Lawson, yeah, really brought it home started at that 25 meter mark uh, got a really great start Sheridan and uh, was in front but you know started to uh, to peg her back at the 35 meter mark and was well in front half a second already at that halfway mark so what a swim B final now The B final is underway for the girls 14 years 100 meters freestyle we saw a very controlled but fast swim from Lawson, Alyssa Lawson from St Andrews in the previous race. So far, starting out similar to the A final, it is Liliana Jones looking strong in three. Also next to her, Miller Raven. But I think it will be Jones hitting the wall first. Her or Mello right next to her. It is Jones in three. 28-4-7 at the halfway. Also down in lane nine, Stella Dodwell. It's sometimes tough in those outside lanes, but if you can do it without anyone seeing, the pressure is off. Lane three, just holding on ever so slightly, and I think extending potentially now Liliana Jones. Down to the wall. She's done a great job. I think she's going to get there. She will get there, 59.28. Great swim, faster than this morning. She had a really good turn. I was watching her turn, and she really tucked up really quick, but also shot her legs out super quick. So she was she was better than anyone else in that field in that turn. She seemed like she had those skills pretty nailed. And just bounced off the wall down for that second 50. And that second 50 is not an easy one, but she made it look easy. 59.28. 59.58 Miller Raven, Anna Thompson, 59.65. I think the action's a little bit more exciting than that, ma'am. Yes, you're on. We're putting it all on now. We've got the boys 15 years, 100 freestyle. That record there from Flynn Southam stands at 49.55. We saw him earlier in the week. That's a typo, yeah? No, that is a real I deal. I mean, 49, at, at 55. 15 years old, that is extremely impressive. Yeah, that's amazing. And obviously, being the likes of Kyle Chalmers and Ian Thorpe as well, who ha would have hold, held those records prior to Flynn breaking that. But we'll see what the boys can do tonight. They're a little bit off that kind of pace, but we always love the boys ha having a crack and seeing if they can best their PBs. Yeah, fastest qualifier this morning, Cassandra Serda from New Caledonia Club. We see uh, Oliver Connell there just being presented in lane six. Cashy Lou, 52.88 this morning. He looked good, but there is our fastest qualifier. It was a good swim this morning, but there's not a lot between this field, is there? No, but he did look really good this morning. He sort of, like, built that last 15 metres and then was half a body length on the field. He's also very good at his sprinting. He's done lots of those 50s where he's won. So it'd be good to see if he uses his speed taking that through that first 50. And then maybe it's for him just a matter of holding on. Yeah, some really classy swims. And uh, it's the swimmers like Serta that have been in so many events. They just learn so much from every single one and putting it into practice. And he's got lane four for this 100 free final. The boys, 14, 15 years, 100 metres freestyle. And it is Serta already out after a, a very good underwater. It's so important to get the skills right, but uh, I've got to say his stroke looks so strong. It's, 
It's almost David Popovich length and control, isn't it, uh, Alex, as he comes down to the halfway mark? Yeah, absolutely. Looking really strong out in front. He's got those really nice long arms. Fantastic underwaters, as M mentioned before. He's going to look to make a move here. He's used his early speed. Can the boys come over the top of him? We've got Kashi Lau looking that direction. So using a little bit of motivation, they look to be catching now. Lachlan Davies in lane three, really making a move. Will those long arms hold the win on the touch? And it is Serta out of lane four, 52-27. Lachlan Davies will be the Australian champion as he, Serta is a visitor. So congratulations to Lachlan with a 52.47. Yeah, we're happy with uh, Warringah getting that uh, with our pick caps this morning. Thank you, Warringah. But yeah, Lachlan Davies, I thought he was going to pip him there. That was very close. Yeah, I thought that Serta was shortening his stroke a lot in that last 10 metres. Like, it seemed like he was he had his head down and he was just like, please, Wall, come at me. Yeah, he'd done so much work to get himself there and sometimes that's the uh, the payoff, isn't it? That last bit hurts that much more. Well paced, but uh, ultimately not quite enough for the win. But as you said, Alex, enough for the first gold medal for Australia as uh, he is the first Australian to the wall. Yeah, and looks like Kashi Lau will end up with the bronze medal there, finishing in fourth place. So really good swims from the boys as we move now to the B final. B final is away in the boys, 15 years, 100 metres freestyle. The middle of the lane, Adonis Giotopoulos from Caulfield. He had the fastest time this morning, but right next to him, Archer Melifont from MCA, I think had the better start. Even lane two, Fred Hassel is now starting to move through. I think Hassel will take them through at the 50 metre mark. It's then just an absolute race down to that finish. Hassel does in a 25-7-1. Second through Hopkins in lane one, and it does seem the action is on the minor lane numbers. Starting to come through now in the middle of the pool, though. Even Logan Reek out in lane seven had a fantastic turn, just absolutely rocketed off the wall. But it is going to be the middle of the pool, and out there in lane one, though, William Hopkins looking to spoil the middle of the pool party. This is going to be a fantastic finish. Wow, it is William Hopkins outside of lane one who gets the win, 53-81. Max Hewitt in there for second, 53-83. And Adonis Giotopoulos coming in third. I think if that was a 99 metre race, a 98, a 101, 102, we would have had a different result every single time. That was very close to the wall. All the way in, the la in lane one to lane seven, all the way through the middle. What a race. I, I thought we were going to have a dead heat there for a yes, second. Yes, we've had a few already. We have. That was intense to watch. But obviously we see with the 50s that you tend to not breathe that much at all. You, like one, maybe two breaths out of a 50. Alex, what would you do in a 100? Are you sticking to your normal? Like, would you breathe fours? Would you try and save those breaths for later on? Uh, definitely. It's all about getting in a rhythm, I find. So the less breaths you take, I feel the faster you're going to go. So when you're holding that breath, I tend to breathe every four strokes, but it obviously does vary. Some people like to hold their breath all the way through the first 25 metres, but that's obviously going to produce a lot of lactic acid and may end up hurting you in the back end of the race. Well, we've got the girls here in the 400 metres freestyle. We had plenty of heats for this 400 this morning, and we had pr plenty of amazing results as well. Fastest through this morning was Ava Gasky. From the Highlanders, Delta Cross second through. We had Beerman and Emily Smith. So a lot of great swims this morning, but uh, it was that faster swimmer. 4.23 Gasquet went and uh, 4.26 for both the second and third fastest. So as we see the swimmers just being presented to the crowd, bit of a wave. And some great support here from the crowd. And Denise, a bit of a wave in a bright red suit. Love to see the athletes smiling behind the block, really making the most of it and just enjoying racing under the lights, under the 
clear sky of the Gold Coast. We're away for the girls' 15 years, 400 metres freestyle. The Australian record for this event held by Tracy Wickham from 1978. That's quite some time ago, 406.28. And that uh, has already st stood the test of time and I think it's going to be there for quite some time from now. Fastest qualifier this morning will take you out at the 50 metre mark. Ava Gasquet out in a 29.38. Gasquet from Chandler. So number 4.23 this morning. Three seconds clear of her rivals. In fact, Maya Beerman as a rival is also her training partner at Chandler. So Beerman and Gasquet very used to being in a lane next to each other. And Gasquet really pushing away already in this early stage. We're not even a quarter of the way through this race and we're already a body length ahead, so very confident swim already. Yeah, 400 freestyle is all about confidence and asserting your dominance on the field out early, and that is exactly what Ava Gasky is doing. I'll tell you what, though, if I was the training partner of Ava Gasky in Beerman in lane number three, she'd know how she swims this, so I'm not sure if the coach at Chandler would have uh, passed on any information on what's happening on, in the middle of the pool, but... We know Ava Gasky is taking it out nice and quick, and we know she's got the back-end speed, so to take it out early and fast is a very scary thing for the rest of the girls. Yeah, you want to make sure that you're in with the hunt, and uh, as much as you want to swim your own race, and that's really important, if you do see someone do something and you need to be able to make that call, whether you react or not, or whether you just uh, stay put, uh, I think Gasquet's now made such a lead that... Uh, if the other girls do react, she's got a bit of time to react herself. So very good tactics so far just to get out into some clear water. Right next to her training partner, as we said, Maya Beerman. Pretty much even line of stern with lane six, Emily Smith from Rock City, a rocky city. So very tight in four second, but third as well. We've got three across the pool lanes two, five, and seven. In fact, lane seven pushing through now, Tilly Fickers, Emily Smith, and Arabella Tomlinson just behind, and Tilly Fickers starting to make a move. I'd keep it on Emily Smith in lane number six. She's our 15 girls, 1500 meter freestyle champion, so we know she's going to have a great back end, and I think she's actually closing the gap a little bit on Gasquet there in lane number four. We know Gasquet, she's got quite the lead here, but it's quite the third 100 here for Emily Smith in lane number six. So if she can gain a little bit of room in this, what is it, 650 here, I'd be, I'd be watching that space for the last 100. Yeah, what do you think, Alex? She looks strong. It doesn't look like she's going to slow down at all here. It's, it's not slow, it's not conservative, but it's controlled. Yeah, she set herself up really well through his first 300 metres, and she looks now to maybe be stepping on the gas a little bit, really working that last turn, last 100 turn. As we've been seeing, her kicking is very consistent, very steady. Watch the last 50 to see if she picks that up and really drop the hammer. But as you mentioned, Emily Smith out in lane six, really to put in, putting in a really good last 100 meter effort here. Let's see how this finishes up. Yeah, I think Gasky has not only done enough, but looks good enough to hold on to first. The battle will be for second. Beerman in three, I think slightly ahead potentially of Emily Smith. It's going to be nothing in it. It will be Beerman to the wall first. So Chandler, Chandler first and second. One, uh, 347 and 350 at the 350 mark. And Gasky now coming home. 25 metres to go. She looks good, doesn't she? That is very strong swimming. Beerman coming back at her, but it's too little too late. Yeah, really strong swim here from Gasky. And she's just powered. She took control early on in the race, and now she is absolutely motoring home. But the battle for the minor places here is on. We've got her training partner in Beerman coming to the wall now, and she will touch for second place in a 4.22.95. Amelie Smith in a 4.23.11. Fantastic race from the girls, and the training partners go one and two, which we love to see. Yeah, 4.18.93. 
That's a very quick time, and she earned it in every single lap she swam there. 16100 separating second and third. That was tight, and a really good race for second. Figures in for fourth, Davies in for fifth. But it is Gasquet for 18.93, our winner of the girls. 15 years, 400 free. Yep, she was steely focused after that race. I'm not sure if she was super tired or had more in the tank, to be honest. She uh, wasn't breathing that heavy, but fantastic swim there from Gasky. Yeah, it could, it could have been a, yep, that's what I did, or it could have been a, I have no idea what's going on in <laughs> this complete world of fame. Absolutely, that 400 metres is a, is a long way, and, you know, you got a little bit of lactic acid build up. So, you know, the legs are a little bit tired, but she's jumped out of the pool quite comfortably, so maybe she had a bit more to give. And as we see some crowd shots, so I'm just looking at the program here, Brayden. The next event up, the boys, 16 years of 400 metres freestyle, is one of your favourite athletes from the Breakers WA. I'm going to let you say it, who is in lane for our fastest qualifier from this morning. I'm going to say this now. If Lucas Factor the Mackerel wins this, Matt, I think I think it deserves you to, to say the name. You've said it before, and I think I've said it, it again. It was a slip, okay? It was a slip. I didn't mean to. I apologise. Uh, no, it's uh, Fackrell the Mackerel is in lane four. That's twice. Will it happen three times? I doubt it. Tian Berger out in lane eight. Kai Gilbert in seven. William Mackay in lane six. McGoffin in five. Freeman in three. Wilson Moran, we saw Campbell Wilson Moran swim a fantastic 100 free earlier in the week. He's now in the four. Jack Morrow, Nathan Williams, there's some really strong competitors in this. And the difference between second place from this morning and eighth going through is less than two seconds. 105.0 to 106.8. So 1.8 seconds separating eight swimmers, seven swimmers, second to eighth. Uh, is quite remarkable. Fackrell 103, so a second, a second and a half in front of McGoffin, but it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. I know that the heat swim isn't the best litmus test for the final result, but it's information, and that information says that we're going to have a tight one tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And in a 400 metre freestyle as well, you sometimes expect the gap to be a little bigger here, so we actually could see an extremely close race all the way through the eight laps of freestyle. Yeah, there's lots of room to move, and uh, they've all moved in almost the same speed. The Australian record there, again, surely that's a typo. 341 for 16 years for, by the big Ian Thorpe. I think that would have won world championships at the start of the year. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. What is that, 1999? So, in fact, that race would have been done at the Pan Pacific Championships. Uh, so the Pan Pacific Championships against uh, all the... Pan Pacific nations, uh, America, New Zealand, Japan, obviously Australia, uh, Canada. So really big meet there. That was actually in Sydney. That was a lead-up meet to the Sydney Olympics. And um, that would have been a gold medal winning performance on the world stage by Thorpe. 341. But we have Fackrell the Mackerel. It's three times. I've done it. Well, he looks really pumped. I, I, I was really impressed by that. Completely, vastly different there. Fackle and Mackle compared to lane number three, even Freeman. We love that. I don't know. How would you? I know you're probably not a 400 special. I don't know how I'd take it out, but Alex, would you want to be pretty pumped up for a 400 or nice oh, and relaxed? I think you've got to be. You know, it's a national final. Like, you know, it's no joke. So you want to be getting up and really puffing your chest out a little bit as we just saw Solomon Freeman, maybe trying to get into the heads of the other competitors. And that does start at the age of 16, by the way. Well, we love to see it. And something else I would love to see is a great sub four minute, 400 freestyle here for the 16 years, boys. With the gun going and the splash from the swimmers and a bit of a hoof from the crowd, lane three with the best start, Solomon Freeman. It's a 400 free, it's a long way to go, but if you're going to go, why not go early? And he seems to be moving. Lucas Fackrell in the middle of the pool, our fastest qualifier from this morning. Went a 420, no, sorry, 403 rather. 403 this morning. He does turn first. Freeman second. Only just behind him, about two tenths behind him. 
Some movers out in the outside lanes, Gilbert and Berger. But it is still Fackrell in the middle in lane four, really dictating the pace in this first 100. Yeah, the 400 metres, it is a pretty long way, but Fackrell is looking really strong here. His stroke looks fantastic. Nice long strokes out in front. He's not overkicking. Working those walls as well. But outside in lane zero, Jack Morrow. Very strong through the first 100 metres, and he's making a play. He really is. Uh, this could be an interesting race. Jack Morrow out in lane zero, touched second, is coming up to an even swim, and Fackrell is breathing to his right. He can't see lane zero, and even if he was breathing out that side, I'm not sure if he'd see four lanes over. It is a fair way to see with the lane ropes in the way. Lots of splash. He breathes pretty low, Lucas Fackrell. Jack Morrow, yeah, what's that? Uh, point two behind, so it's still very much anyone's game. Absolutely. He's looking towards the wall now, though, Morrow. So he's actually going to be having to race himself a little bit. So he's going to have to be brave. He's going to have to trust his instincts and his race plan and really work this next 200 metres. Yeah, not sure if Fackrells could see him, but he has made a move, and I think he's just pushed out. It was only point two. That point two has been extended to about a second now at the halfway mark. And here comes the all-important third 100. We know the skill and the endurance that Lucas Fackrell has in the middle of the pool. He took out the 1500 for the 16 boys here. So we know he's not going to fade in the back. But the question is, can Morrow hold on? And at the moment, it does look like Fackrell is still holding on to his lead. Yeah, he looks really good here with 150 metres to go. Doing the double breath, trying to see who else is around him. He's probably realised now he's got a little bit of open water. Looking at about a 31 second, 30.50. So if he can hold this pace, he's looking for a very swift time and a great improvement on this morning's time. Yeah, we'll see his 300 metre split. That'll give us a really good indication of where he's at and what his potential 400 final time will be. He's still looking smooth. He's starting to move up and down a little bit more than he was in the first laps. So the fatigue's starting to stick, stick in and uh, turning in a 2.56.99. Jack Morrow, 2.59.36. So the only two underneath that three-minute mark. I think we're looking definitely for a sub four. I don't think he's going to drop to a 104 in this last 100. He is tightening up a little bit, but I think he can hold on. He's doing a fantastic job. 50 metres to go. Let's get behind him. He's really worked that turn into the last 50, and let's see what his legs have got left. He's taken it out extremely hard, took control of the race, obviously trusting his race plan. I love to see Jack Morrow out in lane zero. A really, really brave swim from him, and he is turning on the Jets as well. Yeah, yeah this is turning into a great finish. Braden, bring us down to the wall. Oh, watch out for Morrow. But I think all eyes on the middle of the pool. Lucas Fackrell playing the limbo here. How low can he go? But it will be gold for Lucas Fackrell, the mackerel. And a 357.91 for Lucas Fackrell. What a brave and strong swim. Really went out after it, trusted himself, had the belief backed himself the whole way. He puts the number one because you deserve it. You earned it, mate. He knows that. It's a sensational time. Not just dipping under the four-minute mark, absolutely obliterating it. If he was a limbo player, oh, he'd be national champion as well. Yeah, and a very nice swim there from Jack Morrow. We can see the times there. 4093. Campbell Wilson Moran from Caulfield Aquatic. 40401. And McKay in a 4.04.03. So some really tidy times there in that final. Gee, we've had some good racing. We've had uh, people taking it out. We've had people coming over the top. We've had it all tonight. There's plenty more action here. We've got the girls coming out for the 17-year-old 200 metres butterfly. And the 200 fly really does throw some interesting uh, dynamics into it. The 200 Fly is an event uh, you don't really want to go out too hard, but you've got to make sure that uh, you're not slowing down because it's whether it's easy butterfly or hard butterfly, it's still exhausting. It's still not efficient swimming. Yeah, absolutely. Butterfly, one of the tougher events. And, you know, the 200 Fly is arguably the toughest, but 
leave that argument up to everybody else. The, to 40, the 400 and the 400 IMs, the 1500s, and yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. <laughs> Even the 50 freestyles, if yes. you let them have their say. So, but the girls, 200 fly, they should be in for a very interesting race, and we'll see who can really get into a rhythm throughout this race. I feel like getting a really good start, working that underwater, and just setting the tone, setting your rate, and seeing if you can hold on throughout the whole 200 metres. Well, we know Jessica Cole, she took it out really fast in that first heat, intended to back it back there, and then dueling in that second heat, came through and got and secured that lane four spot, number one spot in the final. So we saw Cole back it off. So I'm keen to see if that last 50 was a bit of a warm down swim for her and how far she can go in this last 50 because, hey, that's where the race is won and that's where the race can be lost. Absolutely, and Eloise Doolin in lane four going a 210.9 this morning. It'll be fantastic, fantastic, sorry, to see, every, see if anyone can dip under that 210 mark. And the girls are off and racing now in the 17 years, 200 metre butterfly. Some fantastic underwaters coming from Poppy Stephen off the gun there. And as we mentioned, the 200 fly, it is a gruelling race, but it's all about getting into a little bit of a rhythm, seeing if you can hold that rate throughout the whole race. Exactly right. And I'm excited to see how Jessica Cole takes on these underwater works. They were incredible in the mornings. So let's see, as we see her turn in first here in lane at number five, coming up at about that six metre mark. So very keen to see how she utilise her fantastic underwater work for the rest of the race. Poppy Steven there really working those underwaters, looking nice and fast out there. She turned through in fastest qualifier and still sort of holding the field just slightly here. As we head down to the last 15 metres of the first 100, she's certainly looking strong. Nudgee College has produced some very good swimmers over the time and still producing some now by the looks of it. And she will turn through first, 102.65, just in front of Cole, 102.91. And Vag there turning third. Don't sleep on Roberts either out in lane number seven. Your swimmer from Rocky City. Obviously, she's had lots of racing, but can handle that very well. Yeah, some fantastic underwaters there from Poppy Steven, proving to be the difference at the moment. So it just shows how much emphasis is placed on these skills because they can win you races. But as we move through to the 150 metre mark, the girls in lane four and lane five starting to make their move. Who can nail that last turn? We're going to see Steven work that underwater and she's going to pop out in front. Fantastic underwaters. But here comes Doolin, here comes Cole, and here comes Sally Vag. They are all moving through now. This is going to be an absolutely ripping finish. But Poppy Steven, looking strong throughout the whole race. She's, she is holding on. Eloise Doolin maybe can see her out of the corner of her eye. Who is going to put their head down? It looks like it's going to be Poppy Steven nailing the finish. And she gets it. 210.57. Eloise Doolin to 11.4 in second place and Jessica Cole rounding out the medals in 212.02. It was the underwater, underwater work there. We thought Jessica Cole, she was backing off a bit of underwater work and Poppy Steven said, no, 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 I'll do it for you, mate. And that is why she took gold there and she's absolutely stoked. How has she got that much energy after a 200 butterfly? I don't know, but I guess that's what a gold medal does for you. Exactly right. A fair few endorphins, I could imagine. Lots of adrenaline after that race. I'll tell you what, if I did a 200 metre fly, I wouldn't even be able to get out of the pool. So it's really, really good to see. That is absolutely phenomenal. The deal breaker there being the underwater work. If you are a budding butterfly or swimmer there, take note. That is how you swim butterfly. Races are won and lost with great skills. And someone who knows that all too well is Olympic gold medalist, Emily Seabom. Yeah, so Poppy Seabom will take out your gold medal in that 210.57. Doolin will take out the silver, 211.40. And Cole will take out the bronze, 212.02. And it was really nice to see Poppy Seabom's teammates there on the side of the pool. She ran over to them very quickly and gave them a big hug. But good job also to Crowey who's the coach there at Nudgee College. So what a swim that was and one of the first wins we've seen from Nudgee College. Good to see as we head now into the boys' 18 years, 200-metre butterfly. 
Yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Obviously, I'm going to be a little bit biased here, but out in lane six, we've got Carl Alberton from the Miami Swimming Club, as you can see on the screen now. He's got the beats on. He's looking strong. He won the 200 IM earlier in the week. He actually won the 200 meter butterfly last year for his age group as well. So we'll see if the boys have been able to put in a good 12 months of work, if they can catch him. We've got a really strong mullet there from lane number four, Daniel Beauchart. You would think that would slow him down, having the hair hanging out the end of his cap there. Whether he tucks it in at the end, I don't know, but yeah, there was a lot of hair hanging out there. There is, there is the power of the mullet. That is a, such a thing, so it gives you a little bit of an extra boost, I've heard. I'll tell you what, I, my, I got shoulder length hair at the moment, and I did a 50 sprint uh, the other day without my cap on, and there was a lot of drag, so I hope he does tuck it in because it's, it's quite the luscious hairdo. But I don't know if luscious hairdos... Uh, increase or decrease drag I think it would definitely increase drag so let's see how he goes in lane number four this is going to be another one of these fantastic races here at the age championships Take your marks. diving and thriving into this 200 meter Butterfly here for these boys. Mullet watch in lane number four in Boschart. We saw it behind the blocks. We thought he might tuck it in, but he's leaving the locks out. Is that going to make and break it? Well, at the moment, his mullet is leading the way, head and shoulders in front. And as we can see, the boys starting to get into their rhythm over this first 50. Looks to be quite swift. 27 over that first 50 metres. And looking at the underwaters, Alberton... Touched in second, comes up first. Will we see another textbook underwater race that could see him get the win here? You obviously train with Alberton out in lane six, so what's he like as a trainer? Yeah, he is in the age group squad under Paul Crosswell, but we obviously cross paths at the Miami Aquatic Centre. And look, he's an absolute beast. Every time I look over there, he is heads in front of the training squad and he's always steely focused. He gets to the pool, he knows what he has to do, and it's really proving dividends, winning that 200 IM earlier in the week. Oshab will lead us out in that 57.77. So looking very strong out there, but the top three of them are all pretty close to each other. So that's Alberton, Clifton, and Brochart in lane four. Looking very strong. That's sort of the top pack. And then the next few are behind them. Brayden looking very strong as we head now into that last 50. As we come into the last 50, there's 0 0.0 nothing of a second separating Gomes, Boschart and Clifford here. Great skills from both of those boys. Boschart leading the way off that turn. There's an absolute blanket across these three boys in the middle of the pool. These are going to be your gold, silver and bronze medalists. Can the mullet get in front? It does look like it. He's streaming, him beaming. His mullet is gleaming, looking strong. It's going to come down to the touch. Four, five, five, four. It will be lane number four. Five gets it in Clifford. Just off. Was it the mullet for Boschart that put him in second? Yeah, we'll never know if that mullet needed to be tucked. But Clifford takes out that win. 201.95 in front of Boschart. 202.18. And Alberton takes out that bronze. 203.48. So very good swim there. Boschart shaking his head there. Don't think he's happy with that silver. But what a swim for yeah, Clifford for the win. Fantastic swim from Clifford there, a South Australian resident from the Marion Swimming Club. So really good to see him coming through and taking charge in that win. But, geez, it was close towards the end. All the top three competitors touching together with that final 50. Look, I'm all about having a good time and letting the locks out. But I think that's a, that's a sign for Boschart that sometimes hair is drag. So... He only just missed out on that gold medal there, and I'm not, I'm not going to say what it was, but I think it may have been the mullet that created that little bit of drag because there wasn't much in that race there, was it, Emily Seabong? Can we put it down to the mullet? Yeah, well, I always tuck my hair in, so maybe next time he will tuck the hair in, but we'll never know. As we head now into the girls' 13 years, 100-metre breaststroke, the Australian record there, 111.66. This is one of the only records that I don't see Liesl Jones holding. This is by Hayley McKinda. We've seen her a lot this meet. She now trains at Griffith Uni. We've seen her in a lot of those breaststroke races. 
But this is shaping up to be another great race. We've seen so much already. The top four here, all in that 115 range, about 0.5 difference. So that's your lane six, five, four, and three. So it could be on the finish, this one. Yeah, it should be a very interesting race here. The girls looking very focused. A few nerves by the looks of it, a little bit jittery. But, Emily, nerves are almost always good, aren't they? Yeah, I love nerves before I go out. Obviously, there's a, a fine line of too much nerves and the right amount of nerves. So, for me, in the marshalling room, if I don't talk to anyone, I get too nervous. But if I tend to sort of talk to people and relax, I feel like the nerve level is good. So, these girls are your youngest age group here. So, they're going to go out there and show us what they've got. In the water for the girls, 13 years, 100 meter breaststroke, and popping up around that 10 meter mark. And it is a bit of a blanket field now. But it looks to be Avery Coe in lane six, and Leona Low Hermans from Nunawading in lane seven, taking the early lead. So we shift our focus to the middle of the pool. Looks like the rates are pretty high moving through this first 50. But it is going to be Avery Coe. She's looking strong. As we head towards that first turn now, it's all about timing on the touch and looks like they nailed it. Nice long split stroke here. Avery Coe, here we go here. She touched that wall first, but here we go. The middle markers are starting to make their move, but I can tell you what, Emily Seabom, Avery Coe may have been winning this race from start to finish. We are seeing lane number three and four start to make a move. Here comes Finselback, Emily Seabom, try and pit this one at the end. Yeah, the girls are really moving now in those middle lanes, McKenna Finselback. But Co trying to hold on for the lead here as we come down under the flags. I think she's lost it here on the touch. Willie Finselback taking it out, 1-14-4-6 in front of Co, who held out that first 50. 1-15-1-3. And Olwen E takes out that bronze. 115-24. Nothing in it at the end because the difference between a bronze medal and fourth was 0 0.01, Brayden. And we love the smile there. Absolutely nothing between those top three athletes. I think it did come down to the touch. Finselback just out touching Co, who led from start to about oh, 95 metres, I reckon. Yeah, just got unlucky there in that last 15 metres. She didn't have any more to give but she was able to hold on for that silver medal. And that was another great race. As we head now into the B final, these are your girls that just missed that A final this morning, but get another swim right now. So I'm excited to see this one. Obviously Petrovic just missing out on that final. And oh, let me tell you, there's it's hard when you go to those B finals and you're late number four and you see those times. And sometimes those times are slower than what you did in the morning, it makes you feel like, oh, I should have been there. So I think keep an eye on Petrovic. I think she could be putting it together a pretty nice belief final race. Take your marks. Diving in to the B final, the belief final here. Hoyt hurt Petrovic not getting in to that final. So let's see what she can do. Can she redeem herself and maybe out touch some of those A final swimmers? Bit of a blanket field across the field at the moment. It does look like lane four is starting to make her move through here, closely followed by lane five. Alex Pope looking, Rope looking quite strong. Yeah, Willow Roper now making a move through. But it is Petrovic that's going to touch first. Getting a full stroke on the wall. And as you mentioned, these swimmers might have been a little disappointed to miss out on the A final, but they are getting their shot at a nighttime swim in this B final. And it is Willow Roper starting to make her move now. Yes, Willow Roper is starting to take 
the scruff of the neck of Petrovic in lane four and trying to hold her back. But Petrovic is just grooving and moving her way, trying to make the distance in front. But watch out for lane three. Shachko is starting to make a move. Petrovic, Shachko, Petrovic, Shachko. It's going to come down to the touch. I think it will be. Oh, it's lane number five. Roper upsetting the bunch. Yeah, that was a fantastic finish. Really just getting her hand on the wall there. Only 0 0.08 separating the top two. But again, fantastic to see the improvements on the morning swim. You know, you can learn great lessons by swimming these B finals. Even if you're a little disappointed out of missing the A final, it's always good to come back, work on your race strategy, and potentially pick up little things that you didn't do in the morning and try and execute them at night. And good for these young swimmers to have another swim at night too, obviously being their first age championships. Being able to make a B final is still an achievement for these guys. And then to have that experience of racing fast heats and fast finals is experience that they all need. Yeah, that's exactly right. You can't have too much racing, I think. You know, we, train, we spend a lot of time cutting laps, looking at that blue line at the bottom of the pool, and racing is the the best thing about being a swimmer. Love getting out there and testing all that hard work that you've done in the months prior to this meet. We head now into the boys 14 year olds 100 meter breaststroke. We've got some great swimmers in here. Chan looked really great this morning. He had a really nice glide, really long strokes. He's got a second on the field here. Your second qual fastest qualifier Montana in lane number five. But also don't rule out Dunn out in lane number one. He's good on his speed, so I assume he will take this one out super hard. A couple of visitors here from the Singapore swimming team, which is a fantastic opportunity for them to come over and test themselves against arguably one of the best age group countries in the world. And they look pumped up, don't they? We saw them in that final against Bond last night, and the whole team's come here for business. They're really getting behind their swimmers, and let me tell you, they're all going to be here at the ball cheering on because I don't think they've had one of the Singaporeans take gold here in front of the rest of the field. So I think this could be their race here. It's night seven, so not too many nights to go. So I think keep an eye out and an ear out for Singapore here at the Gold Coast Aquatic Centre. Steely focus look from the boys. And they're off and racing now, the boys 14 years, 100 metres breaststroke. We're looking towards the middle of the pool and he has rocketed out off that start. It is Ted Windsor Chan from Singapore. But right next to him, Christopher Montana in the early stages and Oscar Colombert from the Southside Swimming Club in Brisbane. But it is going to be Chan moving through the first 50 metres very tidily. Bit of a long glide into the wall there as he comes off, but he's got fantastic underwaters. He's almost extended his lead there, but his teammate, Benjamin Tan, also looking to make a move, and it is Chris Montana now moving through. Could Singapore upset the entire field here and say, sorry, Australia, it's going to be Singapore one and two. Chan is grooving and moving his way well and truly into the gold medal position. But is Tan going to make a late run here for silver? It will be Singapore here for first. But who's going to get silver? It's Chan first, and it will be Gilbert. Their lane two silver for Australia. And it's Oscar Colin Bear from the Southside Swimming Club in Brisbane who will take home the Australian Age Group National Champion. So fantastic swim there from Oscar. Yeah, that is your gold medalist, Oscar Colbert, taking out, taking the second touch, but taking the first medal, 105.88. Montana with the silver, 106.04. And Dressel de Boone will take out your bronze there in a 107.12. Obviously, the Singaporean take, took it on the touch with a 104.81. So he was about a second on the field, and he had it from the start. He had it at the turn, and at the finish, it was all over. Yeah, really, really strong swim there from Chan. 
bit long at the 50 metre wall, so he could tidy up his uh, turns and his skills a little bit, and maybe even push that 104 barrier, but also a fantastic swim there from Oscar as we move to the B final of this boys 14 years 100 metre breaststroke. And they are often racing in this B final for the 14 years 100 metre breaststroke. We'll look towards the middle of the pool and the fastest qualifiers. It looks to be Marvin Wu out there in lane two making his move early. And he's gone out very hard. So maybe he's something to prove after this morning's swim. Well, we saw Chen take it out really hard and fast in that first 50, and he managed to hold on. So Wu is looking to do the same. But lane number five, looking really good too, is McMeeking, our visitor from UAE. So could we see a visitor? What do you, it wouldn't be a trifecta, that's three. But two in a row for our visitors, upsetting the Australians here. It does look like McMeeking is starting to make a move in lane number five. But Wu, he took it out strong, and can he hold on? Looks to be Riley Johnson in the middle of the pool now making his move as well. So we are going to be in for a ripping finish here as they come under the 15 metre rope. It is Kai McKee coming through. Riley Johnson. Geez, they're all bunching up now. And wow, it is McKee who will get the win there in a 109.33. Riley Johnson only 0.02 behind in a 109.35. Mameking will take that one out. 109.33, he hails from USA. So it's exciting to see some visitors out here in these finals tonight. We saw a visitor, Singapore, take out that first one. We saw USA take out that B final. But Johnson will take out that first touch for the Aussies there in the B final by 0.02, 109.35. We see so much close racing here. It's great to see another one. Yeah, it just really emphasises how important these skills are, especially in the breaststroke and butterfly races. You really want to be trying to touch at the at the turns in a full stroke, and not so much a gliding into the wall. And also coming under those flags as you finish these races, you really want to touch on a full stroke and try not to get the half stroke in. Another race right up. Girls, 14 years, 400 metres, individual medley. We saw McClellan earlier tonight in that 100 free. She sort of looked a little bit, not as speedy as what we've seen from her, but she's had so much racing. She obviously swam the 100 free this morning and the 400 IM, and she's back again for another 400 individual medley. And it's not a hard one to back up from morning to night. It's a very tough race. Yeah, it is indeed the 400 IM. We've seen a few of them now, and I'm interested to see how these girls will play this race out. McClellan was your fastest qualifier with a 5.02.51. Schumach in that second heat this morning went a 5.05. So McClellan should have a really good heat here, I thought. She sort of backed off in that last 100, but I thought Schumach did the same thing in her heat. So this could be a very interesting race to see who actually gave it more in this morning swim and who has more left in the tank for tonight. Well, both those girls are seated in the heats this morning as under five minutes. So these girls were a good 10 seconds off their PBs this morning, maybe five to 10 to, to be fair to the girls. But I think this race is not going to be a matter of who cracks five minutes, is who's going to go further under five minutes. And we're off now, the girls' 14 years, 400 metre individual medley. We have got two laps of butterfly, two laps of backstroke, two laps of breaststroke, and two laps of the freestyle. A very tactical race. We'll see some of the swimmers go out hard in the butterfly. We'll see some claw their lead back in the backstroke, and maybe some make their move in the breaststroke. I'm really intrigued to see how this race unfolds. It looks to be Yo from Singapore who will lead them through in a 30.5 for the first 50. Pretty swift. 
That is a very swift first 50. Also, equally as swift is Heidi Schumach there in lane five. She took it out quite fast in that first 100 butterfly this morning. And as we saw McClellan and Schumach in the back end of their 400s, they definitely backed off the pace. So I'm very keen to see where both of them are at in the breaststroke coming into the freestyle. But at the moment, we're not even finished the butterfly leg and it does look like Schumach is taking an early lead. Yeah, that's a fantastic opening leg. Obviously a really strong butterfly swimmer, Schumach. So we'll see her work that underwater, another fantastic underwater, and move into this backstroke leg to see if she can extend her lead here. Coming into the all-important backstroke leg here. If we're going to get some backstroke intel on the technique of Schumach, I'd ask one of the best backstrokers of all time in Emily Seabom. Heidi Schumach looking really tidy and strong there in lane number five. Do you think she's taken a little bit of a recovery length? I think we see a lot in the IM people relaxing in that backstroke. You can see there that she's sort of let her legs not sink, but they're not super high. So she's not kicking overly much in that backstroke. She still, though, works her underwater. So you can see that her arms are sort of a slow stroke rate. It's not super high. She doesn't look like she's overly pushing it because we know that breaststroke is full legs. You sort of need to save some energy for that breaststroke because it is so taxing. You can see she's sort of caught up on that lane rope there on her right side. As Emily Simon has been saying across the age championships, if you do touch the lane rope, stick on it. And stick to it is exactly what Schumach is doing. She is streaming in front here, but lane number four, McClellan is starting to make her move as well. Now we know what happens here in the breaststroke. Who is going to make their move to set themselves up for a freestyle final 100? Yeah, Schumach looking comfortably in the lead now. The field's starting to open up a little bit. But as you mentioned, Braden, the breaststroke leg is absolutely vital. And some of these swimmers, some of the really strong breaststrokers, will enter these individual medley races because it is such a critical leg of this IM. Now, Schumach looking very comfortable as she heads into this 250-metre turn. Can anyone catch her from this point? She's got about almost 10 metres on the field here. As we head down into this last little bit of this breaststroke, and we head into the freestyle. And the freestyle's all, all about holding on and giving whatever you've got left. But Schumach, Schumach making it look awfully easy out there. This morning, the girls turn in around that 350 mark. So they want to be turning ahead of that tonight if they want to break that five-minute barrier. And they're looking like, or at least Schumach is looking like she's going to do that. I'm very keen to see how much her lead is going to be exacerbated here when she turns and burns into this freestyle. It will be Schumach in first. McClellan looking strong for the silver and a great little battle between Yo and Ossipenko in six. But it is Schumach streaming and gleaming out in front. Yeah, McLennan really moving through that breaststroke leg nicely and she's transferred into this freestyle with ease and now she is moving into that second place swim. But it is all Schumach. She took it out from the start, had a really strong butterfly leg, a really strong breaststroke leg and she has opened up quite a gap to the rest of the field now. McLennan trying to make a late move here in this last 50 metres. Don't think she'll be able to catch Schumach but really making some ground in this freestyle leg, looking very strong out there. It's going to be a great battle between Ozapenko and Yo in lanes number two and lane number six, respectively. But all eyes and all camera is on Heidi Schumach there in lane number five. We know Schumach is a name in F1 racing, but Schumach is the name here for the 400 metre individual medley for 14 year old girls leading from start to finish, and it will be Heidi Schumach in first. Great swim, followed there by McClellan. Coming down to the touch, and Yo will round out for the visitor, and Ozapenko for third for Australia. And that is Isabel Mul Mulcahy from the Carlisle Swimming Club in third place. The top two swimmers there, under the five-minute mark. Fantastic effort there, girls. Yeah, what a swim that was. McClellan really fought back in that last 100 free. Schumach had about 10 metres on the field, and by the end, she only had four metres left. 
on McClellan there, who came second. But what a swim from Heidi Schumach. 4.57.23. Only two swimmers to go under that five-minute mark. And a barrier they probably both wanted to be at. But again, they were both seated under that five-minute time already from this morning's swim. So very interesting race that was. And we saw, it looked like Schumach may have seen a coach or a teammate there on Pildek. Like a little thumbs up, and then the smile came across her face. It brings a smile to my face seeing that because, Alex Graham, there's nothing better than when you have a great race and seeing your coach and your teammates there on Pildek supporting you. It just makes that victory even sweeter. Oh, absolutely. It's, and that's the whole thing about the age group championships. You know, you come here with your team and, and your coach and potentially your family members as well. So... To look up after a race like that where you've led from start to finish and to see your team members up there. It looks like we were waiting on the results to become official and there has been a disqualification from Allegra Crean from the Marion Swimming Club, unfortunately there. So those results now on your screen, they are official. Schumack takes the gold, McClellan silver, Mulcahy takes that bronze. It was good to see that Schumack there was a six-second better time than what she swam at the New South, New South Wales States. So you can see she's only getting quicker. But again, Sopak is on fire. But Brisbane Grammar, I've seen lots of swimmers from Brisbane Grammar. Obviously, that's coached by Bobby Jovanovic, who was on the Australian swim team. We head now into your boys' 15 years, 400 metres individual medley. We say this every time, Brayden. But it seems like every race is shaping up to be super close and super intense. We have another visitor as your fastest qualifier in Chang in lane number four. But you can't sleep on Higgs and you can't sleep on Kreutzberger. That's in lane three. Well, we did see Samuel Higgs take out the 400 medley earlier tonight. So this will be quite the effort here if both the Higgs brothers can win gold in the same event on the same night for different age groups. What a storyline that would be. I'm a journalist at ABC Sunshine Coast and that headline prints itself. Yeah, amazing swim before from the other Higgs. In the 400 IM, it is now Luke's turn for Moringa in the pretty in pink cap. And uh, this is shaping up to be yet another amazing battle. We've just had fantastic swims after fantastic swims and from all over the place. And the 400 IM is definitely one of those races that can throw up anything. We see the different strengths in the, the butterfly into the backstroke. Often the breaststrokers really make a move and then... Everything you got in the freestyle. I'm interested with Zoe out in lane number one. We haven't, we didn't see him in a lot of races this morning. He sort of pulled out and saved himself for this race. So I'm wondering if he sort of didn't give it everything this morning and tonight he's going to do an absolute cracker swim from lane number one. In the water and away for the boys, 15 years, 400 IM. Well, we saw a Higgs take out a 400 IM earlier in the night. And there's another one here, Luke Higgs, in lane five. Kreutzberger in three and Cheng from Singapore, our fastest through, though, in lane four. Kreutzberger, at the early leader in lane three. This is a long race, though. The 400 individual medley. Two laps of fly, two of back, two breast, and two of free to finish it off. Kreutzberger through 27.74. It was a tight battle this morning in the heats, and we saw some really different pacing, which made it interesting. And you were just saying before, Em, that uh, some swimmers even holding back from this morning to save themselves for tonight. Yeah, it was interesting with Cheng out in lane four. Not sure what's happening because this morning he went out and ran that double O. So very interesting. But Kreutzberger there, 59.95. So going out faster than anyone did this morning in those heat swims and looking very comfortable while doing it. But out in lane number six, Gibson seems to have upped his stroke rate there. It seems a lot faster than most of the boys out there. Yeah, making the most of that backstroke leg. A great butterfly leg from Kreutzberger. Still out in the lead. Caden Gibson from Gladstone South. 
in lane seven. Right over on the lane rope, we've seen a few backstrokers getting a bit close to that lane rope, but he's moved right over, potentially tactically trying to get away from Luke Higgs in that pink Warringah cap. But uh, Caden Gibson now moving across to the middle. In fact, if anything, moving over closer to the rest of the field, but they're really catching up to Kreitzberg in lane three now. I think it's going to be quite tight at this halfway mark, a body length to go, and I think the momentum's on the side of Cheng and Gibson. Yeah, here we go with Cheng. He's sort of making his move right about now as he heads into that bre breaststroke leg, but Kreitzberg are taking us through 2.11, 2.8. This morning they were sitting around that 2.14 mark so a lot quicker than they did this morning. But here we go with Chang. You can see he's a breaststroker. He's nailing that glide. He's staying under the water a lot longer than anyone else and really using that momentum to pull him into the lead. Yeah, he's really showing some dominance. Quite a short stroke and a big kick. He doesn't really do a lot with the arms. Most of that power driven from the legs. Maybe just saved the legs in the backstroke leg. Also coming through, Luke Higgs, very close. It's a tight battle for third. I think he's going to get touched first in that third place. He does touch third, 253. So he's coming through as well. Tankred out in lane four. Caden Gibson in lane six. Almost line of stern, the three of them. But in the middle of the pool, it is Cheng from Singapore, who's really showing dominance in this breaststroke leg. Kreitzberg is such a good job in the butterfly freestyle, but it's such an advantage to be able to touch first after the breaststroke as they're coming down about 10 metres to swim. Cheng with five to go. He's going to turn into that freestyle first. He'll be doing a little bit of freestyle before the others get into it. And that lead will look to extend because he's now swimming that faster stroke. Kreitzberg is still in second. Higgs coming through. I think Higgs... And Tankard and Kreitzberger are really going to have to battle it out for second. I don't know, but Chang's kick there, he's not doing a lot with his legs. Either he's really hurting or he's not quite got that speed of that 100 freestyle there because the boys are really moving and he needs to hold on to this lead if he wants that touch on the wall first. But Kreitzberger going through very strong there, not far off the pace, but it is a fight between Kreitzberger and Higgs and also Tancred trying to sneak up there for the bronze. I think Higgs uh, might have it. This is going to be a lot closer than we think. The legs are starting to come in from Chen because they're really starting to catch. Can Higgs do it? He's really storming home. This is going to be so close. I think Cheng's going to get there. Cheng will get there, but Higgs will touch first as first Australian. So, number one to the wall, our Singapore visitor, Ko Xiong Chen, with a time of 4.33.65. Second to the wall, but fastest Australian, Luke Higgs, from the Warringah with their pink caps, 4.34.16. And Kreitzberger home, third to the wall, second Australian, 4.34.66. I look for fourth, Tancred, 4.39.26. Looks to pick up the third bronze medal position. But what a storming finish from Higgs. I could sort of see it coming, and I, I kind of kept saying, Higgs is in there, Higgs is in there. But I didn't believe that it was actually going to happen. It was sort of a, you know, it could and it really did. That was a lot tighter than I think we thought it was going to be. I think if there was 402 metres, I think Higgs would have gotten there. He, we, yeah. we knew he had that freestyle engine, but that was quite the sprint finish. And I wonder I wonder if he left his run too late. Do you think maybe he was saving himself for that freestyle? Because we knew, we, he knew he had the engine there in the 100. I think uh, M was on it. He, with that breaststroke, he really used his legs up in the breaststroke. He wasn't using his arms at all. Uh, just the legs, and he didn't have any more legs for the freestyle. Uh, he had the arms, but the arms were still pretty much burning from the fly on the back as well. So I, I think he just burned all of his cards and uh, and didn't have anything left. But uh, wow, what a storming finish! I think you're right. An extra tiny bit, and he would have got there. And the headline writes itself: the pair of piranhas win gold at age championship. The Higgs brothers. Wow. What a way to wrap up our individual races here tonight under the lights, night seven. But also now the all-important club pride is on the line here. Starting off with our 13 to 14-year girls, 4 by 50, 
freestyle relay. First of three heats and a few a few great little swimmers in the water here. Land number five, Castle Hill. Then we have Flinders under the tutelage of Chris Wright as well. Olympian in his own right. And land number three, Crincross Wallaroo to start off our first of five time finals here. Now, Chris Wright was telling me, head coach of Flinders Phoenix, saying two of his swimmers here, it's, this is their only race. They're here to swim relays. So, hey, they're here to get the job done here for Flinders Phoenix. Yeah, Chris Wright, a fantastic 200 butterfly. Really knows his stuff with uh, all the strokes, but especially that uh, sort of sprint and middle distance and the fly. This 4x50 freestyle relay. There's a lot to do in the relay. The changeovers are incredibly important. They've got to be fast, but most importantly, they've got to be safe. You can uh, break by the smallest of margins. If you leave that block before the other person touches the wall, you can move around, you can do a dance, whatever you want, but if your feet aren't touching the block when the person touches the wall, then you are out. It doesn't matter how fast you swim or anything you do, you can't bribe the officials, you are out. So uh, hopefully we don't see any disqualifications, but uh, it's always nervous when you see the swimmer coming at you. You've got three of your teammates relying on you. And uh, we often find uh, people saying, I'll start off because I don't have to worry about the changeover. I just have to do what we always do, just go off the gun. So, uh, yeah, it can be pretty stressful out there. And uh, we've got plenty of heats. There's five timed finals, five heats of this girls, 13 to 14 years four by 50 freestyle relay the times will get faster and faster so only a few swimmers a few teams in this first heat just the three and as we go through we'll have full teams of 10 across so we've got 43 teams competing some clubs entering more than one team and you'll see We've got Morton Bay B coming up, Rackley C coming up, Newmarket Races B, so A, B and C for some of the teams. And a great opportunity for swimmers to get an extra swim at these age nationals and a chance to, even potentially for our first swimmers, they're going off a gun, it's still a legitimate time to set a personal best time. Well, we did hear rumours that our 50 freestyle champions will be the waves here from the crowd. Conias from Somerville. He was 0.02 off the record. Cole Chalmers' record from 2015. Um, he was 0.02 off that in the final. Now, I've had word from his mum through a couple of pipelines, you know. I'm he <laughs> I, hear, I hear the whispers. I'm a lot of whispers here on pool deck. Have you been hanging outside the kitchen at their house, just yeah. listening in? Yeah, just, just like the old cup next to the window. But I did hear that... He's going for it tonight. So first pick, In the relay. In the relay. He's going to go off first. That's a smart move. So, yep, record watch is on for the relays. But first, we do have a 13 and 14 14-year-old girl. So we've still got a bit of a way to go before we get to Conias. But keep an eye out for Somerville for our boys. Now, I was told that the, these records, the 50 records, be, uh, some story about it not being an Olympic something, they don't have records. Surely that's not the case. I mean, there's freestyle it counts, but I think for the form strokes, because it's not an Olympic event. Whereas but it's just a record. Is. Like, surely. Someone's got it written down somewhere. It can't be that hard. So I'm well, really I feel surprised. Like back in the day, they had they had the records. Yeah, but surely, surely. I, I just I find that very hard to believe. I mean, you know, they, they've got an Australian record for the hundred individual medley uh, of short course. Surely they've got a record for that. That's not an Olympic event. So I find it very hard to believe um, that that's the reason. So uh, look, what do I know? I uh, I. Just really find it hard to believe it's not that hard to write down a couple of uh, numbers on a piece of paper and keep a record of it. So, well, you know what um, I can't believe? I can't believe that we're here on the Gold Coast because it's absolutely beautiful here. It's a cracking night, and where else would you rather be? We've got a bit, bit of a delay here, but don't leave the stands. But if you are going to quickly leave the stands, well, you're going to put your feet down on the Gold Coast, and it's absolutely beautiful. But I went for a little swim yesterday. It was, it was pretty nice, but I don't know. The Gold Coast Aquatic Centre is also pretty nice in itself. The crowds are starting to build here. The atmosphere is starting to get electric. Look up in the stands. Even I can see there's no seats filled in the stands. I oh, love the waves here at the grandstand. It's tension starting to build. It's a bit of a delayed start for the final. Um, 
my, my nerves are starting to build. I, I couldn't imagine being in this first heat. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, interest to build in these relays. Uh, I know I just saw Michael Klim's sister in the crowd before, and then you said you just saw Michael Klim. Uh, I did hear he was going to be here. I might um, try and go to him just to say good day, uh, see if I can drag him along here. But uh, yeah, huge interest in these relays. In fact, MC Bomb just disappeared to see if she can go get him. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, and, yeah, we can see the crowds are really starting to, or the seats are really starting to fill because there's so many competitors. As I said before, 53, sorry, 43, rather, um, entries for this girls' 13 to 14 years 4x50 medley, uh, sorry, freestyle relay, and then straight into the boys. And there are four heats, so we've got about 40 in that one so we've got plenty of races coming up the other day we had over a thousand swimmers go through marshalling in the relays and it's going to be similar tonight oh, after a bit of a delay we are off and racing event 152 the girls 13 to 14 years 4x50 freestyle relay five heats in total this is heat one and we have the teams from Kinross Wallari, Flinders Phoenix and Castle Hill here. I'm joined in commentary now by a very good friend of mine, Michael Klim. Klim is just putting on the headset. Um, Michael, it is so good to see you. I've known you since school days. That's how, how, how long we've, uh, we've known each other. But uh, have you been catching the action here at the H Championships? Yeah, so I, I mean, look, I've, I was very fortunate enough that it lined up with a couple other events with the Cooley Classic that's happening on Sunday, and I've got an open water clinic at Kira tomorrow morning. So, also, my, my nephew's racing tonight in the relay, in, a, in the 4x50 free relay, and uh, yeah, look, it's, it's great coming back into a community that, that I love and I cherish, and great to see old mates like I you know, and buddy, others. It's so good to see you. I caught up with Matt Dunn before. I'm sure you've already seen him. And no, said, I haven't. You, know, you haven't. Oh, Dunny's here. <laughs> and what was funny, I was talking to him, and uh, well, there's a race going on. I'll just be quick. But um, <laughs> I saw his son in the race, and I saw him smile, and I thought, I know that smile. And then I looked at his name, and it was Daddy's smile. So uh, thankfully, we haven't lost that. But we're coming down to the final leg in this first heat. Uh, Flinders Phoenix in the lead. Zali Murray taking them home. She's anchoring this home. Uh, sorry, she ran third. Ruby Roberts Potter in the final leg. Wallari, uh, Kinross Wallari and Castle Hill also second and third. It's going to be very tight for second. I think Flinders Phoenix are going to bring it home. First heat of five. <laughs> and Flinders Phoenix do win. So first heat of five, lots more racing, another 40 teams are coming through in this girls 13 to 14. Oh, we've already got the guitars in. I feel like I need to get out. This, this oh, is no. too much of a relationship here. I'm Clemmie, gonna... do you love this guitar? So, do you know anything about guitars? I feel, I've got a feeling there's something about guitars and you... There's a link yeah, there somewhere. Yeah, just not the real thing, you know. Or is it <laughs> celebration, guitar, no, something. No, oh, no I'm, not, I'm not getting it. Okay. As we dive in for heat two of the girls, 13 to 14 years, 4x50 freestyle. We are honoured to be joined by the great Michael Klim. Uh, it should be Sir Michael Klim, I've got to say. Know. It should be Sir Michael I'm Klim. Uh, but uh, we've been talking so much about some of these records um, going back. You know, there's some records here from 1978, mm, can mm. you believe? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, that's back when we were born. <laughs> uh, but it's a long time. And lots of these uh, records held by Thorpe as well. Sydney 2000 was so big. And you were synonymous with, obviously, Sydney 2000 with the guitars. I know you've been asked this a million times, but it was just amazing, wasn't it, Sydney? Well, look, at uh, that relay obviously had, had everything that we needed for it to be that spectacular event with obviously being the underdogs, the Americans sort of setting the stage with, with uh, I guess, with a bit of um, um, the, the not, great, not great sportsmanship. Oh, but yeah, it, no. um, it, you know, it obviously uh, I had a great leg in, in, in the lead-off for the well, world you, record. Yeah, you lead off with the world record. That's not a great leg. That's an awesome leg. Yeah, and Thorpe, you finished it off in yeah. style. So, it was, yeah, it was, a ma you know, it was a magic swim and a dream come true. Thorpe was just the magician with finishes, wasn't he? He could pull anything out. He could be a body length behind at the start and still somehow reach out and get to the wall first. Yeah, I think, you know, that was 
was the first time we saw him change gear with 15 meters to go. And, like, he, you know, he's already got a super powerful kick, but it, it went to another level with those, you know, with those sort of 10 meters to go. Yeah, Ipswich Grammar here in lane five, really bringing it home. They've had a fantastic race over in lane three, Morton Bay, or Miami rather, my apologies. Miami looking good. First and second strong. It's going to be tight for third. Ginadero, Morton Bay and Redlands finding it out for that, but it will be the swimmers in lane five, Ipswich Grammar taking them home this second heat of five. The girls 13 to 14, 4 by 50 freestyle relay. No guitar playing in these uh, relays, which is, I think, a shame. Uh, a little bit of a rock and roll uh, gesture there. I must say, though, the vibe has been great here. I walked in as my first age nationals in a while, and you know, to see there's you know some great support behind the blocks, the parents, the families. It's been really good. So. I saw your sister Anna up in the sta in the stands there somewhere. Yeah, obviously, she's just cheering. Uh, None of the some? nephews aren't swimming tonight, and uh, oh, she's right. up on the uh, actually they up tonight the relay, but she's oh. been up on her feet and uh, she just fun. gets behind everyone. Oh, it's good to <laughs> good to see her. Good to see you. Now you said it's not. It hasn't been. Uh, it's been a while since you've been. Uh, you know, here at the age, age nationals. Now you did something I never did. Which was age nationals. You swam all the way through, and you were you were ranked number one in the world in 200 freestylers. 17 year old, I want to yeah, say. Is that right? Yeah, yeah it was. And look, I, I guess you know, I think that's a, that's an amazing thing watching these guys swimming so fast. But the the other thing is that you can be, you know, you can take yourself to open ranks very quickly. That transition can happen from you know, like from a, we're looking at you know, 15, 16, 17 year old swimmers that can the following year be representing their country. So. Um, yeah, I was very fortunate to make that transition quickly. Yeah, it's absolutely uh, fantastic to have you here, and uh, we'll definitely ask you more. We're just this race is leading off. We've got uh, the swimmers in San Sui in lane four. Their bright green cap always stands out, and uh, looking good early stages. The four by fifty. <laughs> Four by 50 free relays. Now, we definitely did a number mic. of relays <laughs> together, Michael. We did, uh, did. We did 98 together. 98 was a standout yeah, uh, was event favorite. for you. Yeah. You just killed it. You came away. Was it five gold? from Four gold. Four gold, Four sorry. Gold. Some That's silver, right. bronze, <laughs> yeah. and a whole bunch Seven of things. Seven in total. <laughs> Seven medals all up. So, yeah, an incredible meet for you at that World Championship. But that medley relay for us was probably one of my favorite that we had together. Uh, where, yeah. You, know, you, you, you kept this in the game, and, you know, we sort of build up in that relay and oh, you, uh, yeah. you got the lead uh, it was against America we had Lenny Kraselberg leading it off um, I was about half a second off Lenny but he was uh, soon to be the world record holder uh, in the event and we had Phil Rogers yeah. jump in and then you took over the lead with that uh, amazing butterfly kick and then and, fights, yeah, fights to bring it home we jumped in the water afterwards we didn't get dq <laughs> no. which was great and we even did a, a victory lap around the entire <laughs> pool it was in Perth 98 it was absolutely amazing in the summer uh, but uh, the swimmers here in lane four, they've, uh, they've held on, but they've just been past lane uh, five from uh, Rackley. The blue Rackley cap, the big R, is heading down with about 20 metres to swim. The kick is huge, the arms are flying, and only occasional breaths because we want to keep that head down and hard to the wall. Rackley now heat three of five. Times are getting faster. Touches in a 150.65. That's a pretty quick time. Sansui through second, uh, sorry, third in a 153 second. Our visitors from Singapore, 153 03 out in lane one. It's, it, well, I was going to say how impressive it's been to see, it, this, to see the, uh, the, the, the depth and the standard across all events. I've been only here for one session, but it, they've been uh, very impressive. Um, and physically, a lot of them look very fit as well, which is very impressive too. Yeah, it's a real skill getting up. They do an enormous amount of work to get here. We've got so many competitors in this girls 13 to 14, 4 by 50. You can do the maths. We've got 43 teams and with four competitors in each, it's a lot of athletes. As I said before, a 1,000 athletes going through the marching room the other night and a similar... Uh, story tonight um, Michael seeing we've got you here and we're not going to keep you forever because you know we can't <laughs> afford you but um, while you're here uh, how are you going now I know it's been really challenging for yeah. you and um, and you've, you're a very very good friend and we've had a few chats but 
personally I want to know, and uh, I'm sure everyone else wants to know, how's your health? How are you going? You've always been so strong mentally. How are you going physically? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm in a really good place at the moment. My, my health is stabilised and, you know, making the most of it. I've, I've learned to deal with, I guess, my disability. So, you know, I really manage myself. It hurts you know, me of... to hear you say that word because you are Superman to me. You know that, don't you? <laughs> well, I, that's, you know, that's the thing I had to change. I had to, in my identity had to change a little bit and I, I try and adopt that real mental toughness towards my, my disability and I can, you know, I can still enjoy like even being here today and walking around pool deck and coaching and probably a lot of things that I thought initially when I got diagnosed I wouldn't and I'm certainly making the most of it with what I got and um, it's great to be back in, in the swimming world as well. Well, it's so good to have you with you. We're, uh, we've got our swimmers in the final stages of Heat 4 in the girls 13 to 14 years, 4x50. Four the swimmers from Melbourne Swim Club, our old coach, yep. Popey, will be on the side cheering them through. <laughs> Melbourne through Carlisle right all next the to them. To the wall. Beautiful. And a very nice swim there, Melbourne Swim Club, Carlisle in for second, Newmarket in for third. We've got one more heat, and I'm going to ask you one more thing to do, Michael. I'm going to get yep. you to call the next race oh, because, no. uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get you to call the next race because I want to hear your dulcet tones. No, no, and, I'm like, uh, and, uh, uh, get, and get, your, get your insights <laughs> into this next event. This is the fastest heat, heat five of five. Yep. New Market Races A are our fastest qualifiers, as we see the time from the previous heat. These uh, is a, this is a timed finals event, so the top three times will be our medal winners. The top number one will get our gold. Yeah, as as you know, Matt, with the relays, it's so important to to get the team off to a good start, and that momentum carries over from leg two to three, and then obviously you can't make the anchor man or woman uh, do all the work, so it's. Um, if you're coming, if you're falling behind and you have to try and um, make it up on changeovers or underwaters, the pressure gets higher and higher. So it's, uh, it's really vital for this opening swimmer to get, get off the ground. <laughs> No, you go, mate. You. <laughs> Michael, I have to jump in here as well because I am a huge fan of yours, Michael. I was eight years old at the Sydney 2000 Olympics and I'm sure many in the crowd and watching at home on Nine Now were as well. You had a different insight. You saw the other side of Matt Welsh and I'd love to hear any <laughs> gossip no, or no, any no, no, no. weird stays, things that he Vegas? was doing there. <laughs> How was it to be on the team together, though? Well, I admired Welshy because he had so much bloody talent and he could get away with a lot of things that we couldn't. <laughs> I was meticulous in making sure my warm-up was perfect, my stretching was done. I felt like Matt was, had, this, had this, you know, it was great confidence and a lot more talent than I did. But, but, oh, I find that hard to believe, buddy. Um, it, it feels like I you're still pretty it, fit. <laughs> it looks like you're training hard, you look in great shape, and up top you're still as big as ever. <laughs> well, like, for me, obviously, being in good shape is still important. That you know, As you say, if you don't move it, you lose it. So I'm still trying to work my core and my legs. Probably not doing any upper body at the moment, but... Um, yeah, I think it's important. Movement is a big part of my life still. Well, absolutely. This is heat this five. This is a close race. There's movement in this one, isn't there? Uh, lane three is out strong. That's St. Peter's Western. You mark a races. You know all of these clubs and know them well. Uh, who's your money on at this point? They're going into the final touch and transition. It's great to see some of the guys doing the full double step track starts as well, which is, you know, at this age and practicing it early before they get to the open ranks. It's pretty, uh, you can throw a blanket over the field here. I can't really pick it well, on Newmarket, the outside, you know. Newmarket races in green may just come through with a strong finish on the outside lanes are good, but it's lane seven, Rackley. Rackley in lane seven. Rackley in lane seven, Newmarket inside. It's gonna be between those two. The touch goes to lane seven, it's Rackley, one, four, eight, nine, two. Great race. What a fantastic way. We had five heats and it came down to the final as we expected. Huge swim from Rackley, 148.92, Newmarket through 149.21, only half a second back. So, fantastic swim there.
We've got the boys coming up. Before we get to the boys, I just want to say thank you, Michael, because you've got more things to do <laughs> no, than to sit here and talk to is, us. It's so good to see this you. It's a pleasure. I'll um, be back tomorrow. Give me a spot. <laughs> oh, good. I, I will save a spot for you. We'll keep the seat warm for you, mate. Uh, but really, really good to see you. Thank you Thanks so again. much for your stories. Thank no you so worries, much mate. for your insights. Thank you. You're a legend. Thanks. <laughs> So here we go, event 153. This is the club relay for the boys, 14 to 15 years. And what a treat and an absolute thrill, Matt Welsh, to have Michael Klim in the booth with us. He's uh, left to go and do bigger and greater things, no doubt. But uh, unreal insights. I can't wait to listen to that back. He still looks really fit as well, which you love to see. Obviously, he's got his own health issues now, but he looks great and he sounded great and it was so great listening to you two just talk about the old days. Well, the boys are in for the 14 to 15 years, a 4 by 50 freestyle relay. And it was very nice to have Michael just having a quick chat with us. Michael and I have been through everything. We've seen each other at 4 o'clock in the morning and uh, we've, we've seen the best and the worst of each other over years and years. I've known him since school days. I've known him so long, when I first met him, he had hair. So that's oh. how, oh, how long I've known him. I don't remember him ever having yeah, hair. Yeah, very blonde hair, nice little soft blonde hair. Um, but, uh, yes, Michael Claymore, lumpy as he's known to his close friends, um, <laughs> has beaten there and done it all. Number one in the world at 17. Quite a remarkable achievement and um, an incredible man. As we come through halfway point... In this first heat of the boys, 14 to 15 years, 4x50 free. I love the 4x50 free. It is absolutely frantic. It's, there's no pacing. It's just go, 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 and go it is. Lane six, yeah. taking them through Breakers WA, but no, lane number four coming through as well. But I think six have got it at this stage. That is Breakers WA, Jesse White, 14 years old and splashing around like he's a much older swimmer going through to the touch and the last one's coming in. This is where everything changes, folks. We've got Jacob Buckley from Rackley in lane five. He's going to give them a run for his money. Harry Luo from Nunawading. We know he can come home strong. Shabaris, he's out there in lane one and Shabaris is going strong. He's mowing down Harry Luo who has a lead at the moment. But here come the green caps it's lane seven Campbelltown out of nowhere from way downtown Campbelltown coming in to the touch they may have just claimed it but they didn't it was Sheldon in the end that got the touch and lane four new market races I mean what breakers WA yeah big final swim there from the team from breakers WA we see the results and it is BRW Breakers WA 143.26. Obviously, some tight racing in this 4x50. It is just splash and dash times four. Heat two. Off and racing. Center lane, Bendigo East. Number four. I love seeing these 4x50s. I'm joined back in the commentary by Alexander Graham. You know, you've done a lot of relays. 4x50 is an awesome one, isn't it? Yeah, it is really fun, especially when you're a little bit younger. It's just the splash and dash, and, you know, you tend to just get in there and rip it as fast as you can. It's always fast. Emphasis on the changeovers. You don't have to do a flip turn and turn back. So a lot more competitive as well because as the 50-metre boys move through there are a lot of them and there are it is a lot easier to swim one lap than two or three or four so as they're coming through now it looks to be the team in lane six in control lane number five touching first only just though six one hundredths of a second actually 14 one hundredths of a second so very tight but it is lane five still holding it out the team from knox pimble and uh, as you said, uh, it's a great opportunity to get up and go fast, but with that extra momentum that you drive from that relay changeover, the drive of the arms, the drive of the legs, and we see some of them doing that big step in that we just heard Michael Klim talking about, 
with that extra motivation with your three teammates, we see some blistering swims, don't we, as we they bring him down for the last 25. Absolutely there, and it was Trophy Machine from MLC Aquatic absolutely launching his team into first place. But as we see, the team from Knox Pimble now moving through with their anchor swimmer, and they look like they're going to get their hand on the wall first. And it will be Knox Pimble Swimming Club in that first place. MLC Aquatic coming through for second there. Fantastic swims. Yeah, Knox Pimble under the guidance of Lucas Gillett in the final leg. Really fast left final leg there. Much faster than their seeding time. Two seconds faster. Of course, time final is, folks, so they get faster. Uh, we expect the last one to be the fastest. That was only the third. Second, sorry. Here comes the third. So third of four time finals. These are the club relays, and the crowd really does get into them. In lane four, Max Gow is leading it out for Brisbane Grammar. Out wide for Emmanuel College is Cooper McGuinness, and it's a blanket field at the moment. We've got Alex Graham in the booth. He is currently a Dolphin, and you've swum a few relays in your time. Do you like enjoy these, Alex? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, an amazing opportunity to get your teammates together, and you know you train with these guys and girls day in and day out so to really test yourselves and come together as a team we know swimming is an individual sport so to come together with three of your other mates and produce a team effort is something really special well the team in Nunawading is doing an incredible effort at the moment they're out in front Darwin Prarom was a great swim on the second leg and they get the head start for that one it's Javier Aguirre that will follow up at the moment, they're in the driver's seat, but mowing them down is lane six, Southport. Ethan McDonald, they have Jimmy Wang coming up. Ethan's only 14, folks, and this is a 14 to 15 year, so he's the younger of the two age groups. He's coming into the wall. He's taken everyone out, Alex. He has indeed. That was a huge swim there from the Southport team. And he's absolutely rocketed his team into first place. And there is lots of splash and lots of dash happening at the moment. But it looks to be out there, the Nutter Wadding Club, putting in a really, really good effort here. It's, it's going to come down Jets. to the touch. Brisbane Jets, Charlie Austin has a huge final leg. He needs to hold on. They're coming back, though, Southport. They're coming back, and they'll take it. 139-44. Jimmy Wang has claimed it for Southport. Very tidy times there. We can see how much of a difference that relay changeover makes. The boys are absolutely launching off the block, creating all that momentum. And so they are flying through this 50-metre dash. Do you think that was home pool advantage there, seeing as they do train in this pool? Absolutely, I think. And very knowledgeable of the lane six, I would say, the Southport team. Is that the fastest lane, do you reckon? You lucky, swam in this pool? Lucky lane six, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All right, here comes the fourth. This one should be the fastest. Good opportunity for these boys leading off their relay. Their time will count. So good chance to test themselves in their PBs. Here they go, the fourth of four time finals. These are the fast races, and there's a McLaren from Warringah leading them out. Number three, we know the McLarens are very fast. Ethan Hagerbart from Knox Pimble is also out in front. The Knox Pimble contingent have been loud, proud, and they're getting behind him now. Out wide in lane nine, Westside Christchurch, going strong under Charlie Spencer. They take the turn, and the new swimmers come in. A great turn and a great dive out there by Nudge. College. Ronan Rowling had impressive airlift and came out and just took the lead. Absolutely. Extremely high stroke rate from the team from St. Peter's. Ishan Mira moving through the field now very nicely. Good changeovers from the boys and the field looks like they're coming together. But it is going to be the St. Peter's team out in front racing that Knox Pimble squad. Yeah, obviously St. Peter's want this. They want the points. They're on top of the point tally right now, and they want to stay there. So this relay is super important for them to win as they head into the last swimmer. Clark will change over there and looking nice and fast off that changeover. 
They've got it by half a second here. So looking very strong, but wow, look at that swimmer from Knox Pimble there looking so strong and he's going to take over the lead in the last 15. Well, that's Lucas Dunn and we know exactly what he's done on the podium for year after year. He is a regular at the age championships. He's taken it into the wall, but he has just grabbed it. That's gold for the Knox Pimble team. And he's absolutely loving it. We love to see the emotions after the race and they will celebrate accordingly as a team. Very good swim there from Mr. Dunn. Knox Pimble having a great meet here at the championships and they take out that win in, in front of St. Peter's. Probably one of the most, the biggest club with the most depth, I reckon, Alex. Absolutely, they've got a very, very strong junior program, extremely strong senior program as well. They're quite renowned to produce a few members of the Australian swimming team. I think they had maybe 10 or 11 on the team last year. So unsurprising that they're up towards the top end of the medals. As we head now into the girls, 13 to 17 years, 4 by 50 metre freestyle relay for the clubs. Heat one in the water now for the freestyle relay. The girls are up nice and fast. It is Churchy taking an early lead. Yeah, Western Aquatic as well, Alex. They're coming out strong and Churchy right next to them. Uh, in lane five, though, really nice stroke rate from Surrey Park. Skylar Hay got out fast and gets to the wall really fast. The first dives are in. The changeover looks good. What do you have to be aware of when you're making that changeover? Yeah, you really got to focus on the swimmer coming in, uh, their head position. I often look at when they are coming towards the tee at the bottom of the pool because you want to make sure that they're finishing on a long stroke so you can really time the changeover to perfection. Emily Seabom, you've raced in a few relays in your time. What's your favourite memory of a relay? I think my favourite memory is 2008 Olympics in Beijing, being on the team with Jessica Shipper, Liesl Jones, Libby Trickett, winning gold, breaking the world record. But these girls are hoping for the record here tonight in this one as it's shaping up to be one of those races we see in these relays a lot chop and change between people because you can put your fastest swimmer at the front and sort of lead it from the front and try and hold on at the end or you could put your fastest swimmer in the middle or at the end there's, there's lots of tactics to this there's all kinds of tactics and the skills involved are also crucial lane three seem to have nailed that one molly castle the 16 year old for kinross wallaroy took the lead out of the dive and underwater and she is mowing down the final 25 meters 15 to go though and here comes sorry park grace rich wants to take space and time and possibly a podium position. This is the fourth, the first of four time finals. There's the time to beat, 150-56. Yeah, very good swim from the early heats there. A really good representation from a lot, a lot of these clubs. So to be able to get teams together to qualify for the national championships is a feat in itself. Absolutely, and it is such an extraordinary atmosphere here. We had everyone up dancing and singing along uh, to us to a You're, You're the Voice song earlier. So we wait for the second, and we'll chat through the atmosphere when that kicks off. So second of four timed finals in the girls' 13 to 17 years freestyle club relay. They have 50 metres each. It's not far, Alex Graham. What do you have to do to ensure that it is your fastest 50? We're going to be looking at the swimmers that are restricting their breathing. Okay, so the longer the strokes, the faster the strokes. You want to see less breaths because you absolutely got one lap. You want to see the stroke rates picking up. Safe changeovers. You don't want to be the one that disqualifies your team. You want to get in there nice and safely and absolutely rip in. And that's exactly what the girls are doing now. 
Sienna Parks and Morton Bay in lane eight with a really nice ch uh, dive and had an early lead, but she's been mowed down by Redland. Sophie Edwards, 16-year-old, is going hell for leather alongside her. She's picked up the pace, though, Sienna Parks. They'll go into the change. And the next swimmers in the water. Of course, these are timed finals, so the time really does count, M. and they often put their fastest swimmers last, so we have to wait until the end to see the big stars. Yeah, we usually do, but sometimes in these relays, they like to put them in different spots to see if, you know, being in the lead shakes things up. It might rattle a few of the, your competitors that your team is so far out in front, so... Yeah, hold your breath for that last swimmer, but also you never know with these relays what's going to happen. We are holding our breath as the swimmers come up from their dive after the final change. It looks like at the moment lane six is in control. That's Redlands. Nicole Collins, just 14 years old, battling against 17-year-olds. She is earning her keep in this relay and in the fourth and final and fastest spot. She's going to take it all the way. Head down, no breaths under the flags. She'll take the touch, but will the time be good enough? Fantastic swims there from all the teams involved. But we do have a disqualification there. And it could be the Bendigo East team that maybe jumped a little bit too early. So that is one thing in a relay that you have to focus on is getting off fast, but safe changeovers. Here comes the third of four time finals. They do get faster, but we've got one more to go, and we've got a current Dolphin in the booth with us. Uh, we've got a couple, actually, MC Bomb and Alex Graham. And Alex Graham, you've done lots of these uh, time finals and lots of these relays. In terms of the changeover, they can be very quick. There's a rule about when they're allowed to dive in. What's the time split that they're allowed? Well, I think they are allowed a little bit, so it is negative 0.05. Might have to confirm with M. Yeah, and she's nodding her head, so I've got that one right, which we're glad about. The statistician among us says, yep. So you can leave a little bit early, and there is tactics around that, and there's something that everyone needs to practice, because the faster you get off the block, the more chance you are of you know, getting your hand on the wall first. Alana Torrance is in the water at the moment from MLC Aquatic, and so is Eloise McClellan. We've heard their name. They've backed up an impressive program of events. So you can actually anticipate the touch, can you, Alex, as they come in? Yeah, definitely. It takes some practice, and it takes a lot of, you know, changeovers with different people to get the timing right. But the more you do those types of things, and you can actually learn to anticipate when someone is touching the wall so you can get off within a fast time. In lane six, we've got uh, MCA, but uh, alongside them in lane five, we've got the visitors from Singapore. The visitors have had such a strong contingent, and we can hear them here in the stands. They really love supporting their swimmers and their final swimmer. Elte is looking strong right alongside the leader, Sione Kinzet, out of MLC Aquatic. They were the fastest into this heat this time final. MLC Aquatic in the driver's seat to take it home from lane four. They're hitting the flags now. They won't be pushed along. They'll get the touch. And the time, the best so far. Well, the standard has been set. We've got the fastest 10 still to come here but a great time swimming out of lane number three the gauntlet's thrown down i think it may be broken though well, it will be broken yeah it's always interesting when you have these seated heats because sometimes they are just a a tally of all the times put together so some of these girls may be rocking big pbs as we move into the final heat now So we saw a record fall last night. It was by Bond, and the Bond team are in the water now, led out by Miller Jansen. They have Michaela Bird heading up the final lap. They've got Hannah Casey second and Ainsley Trotter third. So that is a formidable foursome. But in the water in lane six is Jacqueline Barclay, the world junior champion in backstroke. She's looking okay on the front stroke as she heads into the first turn and touch. The transition, good. Alex, how are they looking? That was an incredible swim there by Miller, 25.06.
Very close to the time that she did to win that gold medal in the 50. And this is an absolutely loaded team from the Bond girls, and they are showing it at the moment, jumping out to a substantial lead in a 4 by 50 race. It feels unfair, doesn't it? Hannah Casey mowing down the rest of the field. They sometimes find an extra level of speed in these relays. Even some younger swimmers swim above their age and tend to step up when they're among the older, more experienced and faster swimmers. Yeah, absolutely. And... You know, you, don't want to, you are part of a team. You don't want to be the one that maybe goes a little bit slower. So there is that added bit of nerves and a little bit of nervous energy that helps lift these swimmers. Well, here comes Ainsley Trotter trotting right into the change. And we know how fast Michaela Berg can fly. She'll need to do it to hold on because next to her is Sopax Asher Ring, 15-year-old up against 16-year-old Bird. They're both fast. They can both do it. Uh, looks like Michaela Bird at the 25 just has nowhere to go but up, continues her dominance, and the Bond girls continue their dominance in the relays. 15 to go. She won't be stopped. It'll be a double gold, this time in the 4 by 50 metre freestyle relay. Fantastic swim there by the Bond girls, and the SOPAC crew coming in second with an awesome anchor, le anchor leg there by Aisha Ring, bringing her team into that silver medal place. And third, it looks to be like Nudgy College with a 146.67. I was speaking with Christopher Mooney before, guys, and they've only got six swimmers here, the Bond team, and what are six swimmers they've got? They're currently sitting third in the club stands with six swimmers, so he said it's not about quantity, it's about quality for Bond, and there's no better quality than three gold medals from three relays. And that's exactly right there. As the results just popped up on the screen, we had a tie for third. So that doesn't often happen in relays. But very good, the Marion Swimming Club there, tying for third with Nudgy College. As we move now to the boys, 14 to 18 years, 50-metre freestyle relay, the big splash and dash. Expect a lot of white water in this one. Here come the boys. These are the big boys, 14 to 18 years, four by 50 metre freestyle club relay. This is the Hollywood stuff, folks. We had two of them earlier before, Michael Klim in the booth. We've got now Alex Graham in the booth. And we're all just watching to see how these guys go. It's heat one of three times finals. Of course, they usually get faster. Right now, going fast is lane four, PLC Sydney. Terence Kang just in the water now. There's a few others to come as well. Luke Lee will be coming up last for PLC Sydney. There's plenty of stars around, isn't there, Alex? And it's just so fascinating to see how much depth there is across the board in all the clubs. Yeah, absolutely. And the boys have absolutely gone very fast on that opening leg. As we know, the opening leg does count as an individual time. So quite often you will put your best swimmers up first. That will go for their individual swims to try and get their team off to a good lead. But as we see now... Looks to be the team from Ballarat Gold moving through. Yes, Ballarat Gold looking strong, but it is our lead markers, lane four and lane five respectively. Lane five in Randwick City looking very good here for our first heat. It's going to be tough. We know Luke Lee can do, but can he bring them home? Fantastic team effort here from Randwick City. They really moved through on that third leg. And he's really opening up a lead now. Got a big six-beat kick behind him. And the battle for the minor spots here is on as well. PLC Sydney in lane four and Darwin squad. It will be Randwick City with the win. Looks to be the Darwin squad coming in with a second place there. And the PLC Sydney. What? Well, the so we've got a confirmation set. of the rules that we were just discussing earlier. Alex Graham, the changeover tolerance is minus 0 0.03. It's not much at all, but you were very close to 0 0.05. I mean, there's a whisker in it. You really wouldn't be able there to is. tell by a human eye. And it's funny that we say that as a couple of the teams then have yeah. just gone, gone under that time. So there was a couple of DQs in the last heat. Here comes the next heat, though. 
As we line up, shape up. The boys are in the water now. It's heat two of three, timed finals. They get faster. Marion is in lane four. In lane three is Cheltenham. Liam Malloy leading the way out in front and in lane nine. St. Peter's Western, Hunter Milgate with a really fast leg. We know some teams like to put their fastest first. Do you think that's what they've done here, Alex? Yeah, as we mentioned before, quite often they'll be going for their front end time as the time does count. And 23-9. That is a very swift opening leg. Yeah, that's impressive, isn't it? As we see the boys coming into the next one, if everyone could do a 23-9, that would be an incredible time. Uh, the lead changes so much in these relays, so you have to be wary that you don't get too comfortable in any position. Absolutely, and we see the Manly squad moving through with Joshua Kerr, the winner of the 50 freestyle for the 18-year-olds last night. Obviously a very, very strong leg. And it looks to be holding on their lead there. Braden, what can you see? I can see a lot of whitewash. That is for sure for our second or the third here. There's not very much in it at all. It could be lane number six. But let me tell you, Aqua Blitz, they could be coming back strong. It is lane number five. Alex Graham, there's a lot of splash here. And there's a lot of lead changes as we go along. Try and take your pick. Absolutely. It's going to be a tough one. And look here. It looks to be the team from Barker. But it actually is evening out now. We've even got lane seven, the West Illawarra, who has moved through. That is an absolutely ripping anchor leg. And he will get their team on the wall first. Braden Woodford, take a bow. That was absolutely ripping. I'd be interested to see the split on that one. Well, 137, the new time to beat. 137-16, that's the one to get the gold. And these relays do mean so much. I love the tongue out there. Um, as we see those events, and Braden, Jason, we're going to take a look now at the next because this is what excites us. I know that there's a record on the books, and we will discuss that as soon as they enter the water because this could be huge. Yes, it is record. Watch here. Konias 22-3-3 is the time. So in the water now, the third of three times finals and in the lane four, the box seat, Josh Conias, he is swimming first and we've been told, folks, he's going for a record, an Australian record. He missed it by .02 last night in the 53 and if he gets it here, he will qualify as the Australian record holder. It's got to be a 22.33 and it is a 22.52, just .2 behind. I mean, just as close as you can get, Brayden. Well, it doesn't get much closer than that. It's a hard swim there, but it's still a fast swim because Summerfield House is well and truly in fast. And what a first leg. If you're going to be set off, you want someone who's about to break the Australian record, that's for sure. Well, it's double Connie asses, uh, Josh followed by Zach. So they've swum together and done plenty of relays together, you'd think, and they've sat... Hamish McKellar in the box seat to take it home on the third. But look at second and third. There's a real battle going on, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. As they move through the field now, very hard to put together four very fast swims. If they were all 22, they'd be absolutely rocking the record. But it seems to be closing the gap now. Yeah, lane six is coming home strong. And Kobe Bujak Upton is going to be their final swimmer. The anchor leg next to him is Caleb Yargo for the hills. They're going blow for blow. But Churchy is still there as well. And lane four, Somerville House have got Finn Morton trying to hold on as Bujak Upton mows him down. There's half a body length in it. It's going to be held on, though. And Morton Finn, Finn Morton does it. What a fantastic race that was. Kobe Bujak up to a fantastic anchor leg there. Move his team into second place. And the Churchy squad coming in with third. Oh, well, we were close to a record, but it's still gold for Somerville. I know Josh Connie has to be upset with the time, but he can't be upset with the result. It's still a gold nonetheless. Maybe not the time, but it's a team event. So I hope he's not too upset with that because he led his team off well and won them the gold. Exactly right. He did his job there, and that was the aim, was to just get their team out to a nice lead. And as much as we love individual accolades and individual records, these events are all about the team and getting your team on the wall first.
And on the two heats of these time finals for our girls, four by 50, 15 to 16 year girls, freestyle relay. Lane number four, St. Peter's West, and it's their B team. So sending out the B girls to set the tone and the time out first. And they are leading the way, but closely followed by lane number six in Sopak. So it is Sopak and St. Peter's West, but it does look like Sopak will turn and burn here first. Yeah, great first leg by Rafaela Coppolu. We know her name. She's already been around and in the finals and up on the podium in lane five. Knox Pimble look good. They're always very strong. What do you know about the Knox Pimble uh, program, Alex, that is so impressive? Yeah, Knox Pimble obviously out of Sydney. Really high quality sprint program. Have a lot of good sprint athletes, as we saw Kobe Bojack Upton anchor his team home just before to a silver medal. So they've obviously got some high quality short distance freestyle swimmers. Yeah, in lane five, St. Peter's Western, another program we know is so strong, is right alongside Cranbrook. Isabel Hanger, she is hanging on to that first place, really putting the head down, not breathing too much. How much would these swimmers breathe in a 50 metres? Yeah, you're definitely looking to restrict the breath there. So depending on what works best for you, maybe one or, one or two breaths for the whole 50. Incredible stuff. So over 25 seconds or so, they will not be breathing, and they certainly won't breathe. We're going to struggle to breathe as we're on the edge of our seats for the end of this race. Absolutely, and they're coming down to the final 15 metres now. The team from SOPAC. It looks to be head down. We're talking about no breaths as we're coming into the wall. The all-important last final five metres. And it will be lane six, the team from SOPAC. With the Knox Pimble swimming squad finishing in second. Great show of sportsmanship there. Obviously close friends, both Sydney outfits. St. Peter's B team rounding out the minor places. Obviously, St. Peter's A will be featuring in this second, well, second and final, the first of two 14 to 15, 15 to 16, sorry, girls, four by 50 freestyle relay. And they're often racing in this final heat of the 15, 16 years. Girls, four by 50 metre freestyle. I'm seeing a lot of splash, a lot of dash, especially from the centre of the pool here with the UWA West Coast squad coming out to an early lead. Next to them, the Rackley squad and the Nutter Wadding squad seems to be moving through. But don't count out St. Peter's in lane five. Fantastic finish there from Curtis. And a fantastic changeover. Really, really utilising that extra leverage off the start there and moving into almost first place now. Yes, the best thing about the relay changeover is you get that extra bit of power off the block and St. Peter's utilised that and it may just get them in close to butt out Nutta Wadding. It will be Nutta Wadding actually turning, well, diving in there in first place. So great changeover speed and great back end for their second 50, but it does look like there's nothing between our front three girls, Nutta Wadding, St. Peter, and also lane six in Cranbrook. Take your pick. It's going to be either of them. And here comes the Rackley squad moving through now as well. What a fantastic leg this has been. And there is nothing separating these three teams. St. Peter's, Nutter Wadding and Rackley all diving in. Fantastic underwater there from Ruby Crowther for the Rackley squad. And she is looking absolutely fantastic. Her head is down. She's got the stroke rate up. One quick breath at the 15 metre mark. Here come UWA West Coast in the middle for the battle for the minor places, but it will be the Rackley squad hitting the wall in first, and they are pumped. St. Peter's coming in second, and the UWA <laughs> squad. We love to see the surprise faces there. She can't believe it, but her teammates can. Look at the crowd. They couldn't believe it either. We love that. Look at the replay. Absolute elation there oh my goodness we love to see that there congratulations Rackley she seemed very surprised but they had it in the bag with 15 to go they had it under control Rackley taking out the gold St. Peter's silver and West Coast taking out that bronze medal as we head now into the boys 16 to 17 years 4 by 50 free relay 
This is heat number one of three. Fantastic start here for the boys, 16, 17 years. As Em mentioned, this is heat number one of three timed finals. So we're still going to see some very, very fast swimming. You will leave, the boys will leave nothing in the tank for this one. And it is a blanket field at the moment. Maybe MCA just in front here. Looks to be a fantastic changeover. The swimmers utilizing that underwater and the momentum created from that dive. I'd love to know what you do. You've been in a few relays, Alex. Um, how do you take on the relay change? Are you a step and go or you're a time and just standard two foot go? Yep, I've got one foot on the kicker and I'll use my arms to create that momentum and launch myself through the air. I want to get as much air time as possible and then try and hold that dolphin kick through to the 15 as we move through. Looks to be Surrey Park out there in lane two. Moving through now. Fantastic leg. Again, we can see it's all about tactics in this race is where are you going to swim, what swimmers. Sometimes the swimmers will benefit from having that extra leverage off the start. But the field really closing in now. It's going to be a very, very tight finish. The Surrey Park team holding on. But again, the Knox Pimble squad moving through. Looking at the finish now, Surrey Park, very, very strong the last five metres, head down all the way to the wall, which we love to see. And it will be Surrey Park with the Marion squad coming in third there and the Manly squad in second. So the outside smokers have produced very good swims. Yeah, what a time that was. 138.59 there, faster than what they had in the program with that 141. So we see a lot with these relay swimmers that a lot of them tend to swim faster than they've ever swum before, which is really important as we head now into heat number two. And here we go in heat number two. We know there's three heats. We're expecting this heat to be rapid fire. And they are out to a very strong start. That looks like looks to be the Rackley squad in lane five, moving through nicely. And the green cap of Waringa now moving through. Xander Hafflin putting in a very good opening leg for his squad. But it looks to be Rackley closing the gap now. Fantastic swim, 23.73 and 23.89 off the gun. So those times will count towards those boys' PBs. And the pink cap of Waringa Moving through nicely, the iconic pink cap. We love to see it. And we've got the iconic blue cap of Rackley as well. As we change over to that third swimmer, fantastic changeover from the Rackley squad I saw. Yeah, they have definitely practiced that. You don't just do that first go and have a reaction time like that. That is a textbook changeover there by Rackley. It's sky blue and bright pink at the moment out in lanes number three and five. As we see, lane number four starting to make their move as well in Brisbane Grammar. And again, another strong changeover by the Rackley, and it looks to be Rackley versus Warringah at this stage. But as we know, anything can happen with these final legs. Some of the teams will save their best swimmers till last to try and mow the squad down. And that looks to have happened out in lane eight with New Swim making a move. But it looks to be Rackley and Warringah Aquatic and the Rackley team will take out the heat in our 135-37. Warringah, 135-91. And they, the boys, are loving it. So good to see Declan Bud there in that third position for Knox Pimble. Wasn't it, Brayden? Oh, Declan Bud, S14 out there, heading over to Madeira for the European Championship because he's almost got his seat on the Australian Paralympic team, so he'll be back to race in June in Brisbane to get on to his first Australian Paralympic team but doing wonders for Knox Pimble there but here it is our third and final race for the evening and for these boys one last gold medal on the line 
and it comes down to this one. A third and final relay here for the 15 to 16 boys. Our fastest seeded team is Cranbrook in lane number four. And it looks like at the moment it is a bit of a blanket, but lane number five is starting to make a move in SOPAC. Yep, looks to be very close at this stage. And look at that. They are all basically touching together. This is the final race of the night. The boys are up and at them. Lots of splash, lots of dash. The SOPAC team sticking their head out in front a little bit at the moment. Next to them, the St. Peter's Western. But wow, at the moment, it is a blanket field. You wouldn't want to be calling this race too early because there's a lot of swimmers to go. At the moment, it is just SOPAC edging out in lane number five. St. Peter's Western strong in lane number six. Lane seven starting to make a move as well. Oh my goodness, save the hardest one to call for last, but I think Sopak is just starting to assert their dominance here with one swim to go. And keep your eyes on lane four from the Cranbrook squad. We've got Marks De Silva jumping in. He did split a 48-9 in the 100 earlier in the week. Can he jump on, the, on this wash? Or has the Sopak squad made too much of a gap for him? He is closing at the moment, but it looks to be the SOPAC squad. An absolutely dominant 4x50 metre freestyle relay. And they will touch well ahead of the other squads. A fantastic team effort. And James Gauchy bringing them home. And get those pythons out, brother. They also weren't far off that Australian record. That was 132.91. They just hit the wall in 133.29. So nothing in it, but those boys are super happy with that. And Gauchi, that was a good last 50 there. No one came close to him. But there were some great swims. Obviously, Nudgee College out in that silver medal place. And Cranbrook will round out the field with that bronze medal. And that is the last swim of the night. How good was that racing? That was phenomenal racing. And I think some intentional flexing as well for the nine now streams there. I think there'll be a couple of screenshots re-watching on that nine now stream for SOPAC. But why wouldn't you do that? When you're a gold medalist, you can do what you want. That's exactly right. The boys absolutely lapping it up. And as you should, you are the new Australian champions. Well, we love seeing new champions and we love seeing all of the action all night in the pool. Thank you so much, Alex Graham, for joining us. Braden Jason, Emily Seabom, Matt Welsh and Michael Klim. What a roll call of Australian swimming royalty we've had here. Thanks for tuning in on Nine Now. We come back tomorrow morning, of course, for more heats from 9am. We'll see you then.